Welcome to the OSR's podcast. I am in Mad Cow. What's going on, boys? Rakes as always. And it's me, Risco. So, well, I am like unbelievably excited for this podcast because if any of you guys have been watching the last like four or five, we've been covering some really, really exciting stuff that's going on in the RuneScape community, future updates, uh, things such as the, uh, the PvP boss rework, uh, raids free, new servers, etc. And uh, we've been saying every podcast we want to get this certain person to come on and today we are blessed by the man the myth the legend mr goblin aka ben how are you doing man i'm not bad that is high praise i um i've not even been here six months i'm doing this i'm doing like say Bay's cast and a few days i don't feel like i've been around long enough to really be interesting but appreciate the uh, appreciate the kind words oh man okay. we, we have been hyping you up so much like the last last two mint. months they it's mint man this mint. guy loves you <laughs> he is the j god the messiah yeah, of the, the wilderness J-God. dude and <laughs> i have to do the sellout so if we get a thousand likes on this podcast the j god himself will banish all of the cheaters from the wild and bring in prosperity and it's going to happen just like that guaranteed <laughs> Locked it. <laughs> you heard it, boys. A thousand likes. I don't know that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Believe right, uh, in the Messiah. <laughs> the Messiah, bro. Seriously, bro. Glad to have you on. We're going to start with some Q&A. And I just, I'd like to start the first question. Why do they call you Mod Goblin? Uh, well, it was the name that I picked. So, I mean, some people know me as, like, Mildly, which would kind of have been... I guess what I initially was going to go for, but I wanted like a little bit of a a separation between professional and personal. I mean, the line's kind of blurred anyway, because a lot of my friends like know that I'm mod goblin when I'm like on <laughs> Twitch as mildly entertaining or whatever. Um, and for the longest time, I, I think it was from like a Nakey Jakey video or something. He alluded to something along the lines of uh, like gamer goopy goblin brain. And uh, <laughs> ever since then, I've kind of started or I've sort of spoken about myself as having like an ADHD game of Goblin Brain and uh, just kind of pick Mod Goblin. I think phonetically it's kind of cool. Uh, you it's know, in the game and stuff. Yeah, you know. I think yeah. a Goblin. Oh, I think there are goblin worse mod mode. names. Have you ever heard of Goblin Mode? It's I've heard of Goblin. Just... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just heard that people go Goblin Mode. So I, I feel like, I feel like it hit mainstream like after I picked my name and then I was like, maybe it's a shit name. Maybe I should pick something else nah, instead. Nah, dude, like, it's too late. It's, it stays. As soon as it's been on like Ellen or like some like late night talk show, I'm like, eh, know. maybe this is cringe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it fits, man. It fits within RuneScape. I think the real question that Rice Cup's dying to ask right now is, have you seen the anime, <laughs> the anime Goblin Slayer? Uh, no, I have seen two anime. I've seen Attack on Titan and I've seen Future oh. Diary. And I don't Ooh. know if you would count it, but if we would Future include Diary it, I've also fire. seen the I've seen the Phoenix Wright anime because that shit slapped. Mm. I've watched Attack good on choices. Titan. Those are like the only ones that good I've watched. choices. I don't good know choices. if I would Especially rank. Titan, so. I mean, Goblin Slayer is great, but I don't know, man. It's Just, a bit a bit too Attack on Titan's way better. Don't worry about it. Starts it starts out a little strong. <laughs> it's, yeah, it starts a little strong, but it's it's phenomenal. I have... I have friends who try and get me into stuff. Like, I have a friend who um, kept trying to get me into Tokyo Ghoul, being like, it really picks up after the oh, first four episodes. Don't. And I'm like, I can't mm. be asked. Like, please don't, yeah. please don't. It's You'll be good. disappointed. Yeah. I'm and really committed to the first you. season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only first season it, is good. If you awesome. want an incredible oh, anime, which, like, is just good from the get go, uh, the original Berserk anime is it's it's a masterpiece man like the art looks cool for that yeah it's, maybe i'll make some i'm really bad at watching tv in general watch, i'm super picky yeah. the original though do not watch the remake you yeah <laughs> oh man not, please just watch the what was it like 26 episodes or whatever it is like yeah, it, yeah. it's so many normal. episodes <laughs> uh, they're only 20 minutes each so yeah it's yeah more like, well, it's more like 13 and it's really. chat. oh man Never. let's ask chat what is their favorite anime do we have some weebs <clears throat> From the of course, it's, it's so mainstream nowadays, you know. Bruh. They're all gonna be yeah. typing Naruto or Bleach or some shit, bro. I swear to God. Oh, you know the OG, some, yeah, some the OG. fire stuff down there. So yeah, yeah, let's get back on. Track. Let's get back to the Q and A. So my my question for you, I ask this to every single guest that comes on her. Um, how long have you played RuneScape for? A bit. Um, I'm trying to. I- I kind of tried to work it back because it's either 2004 and 2005. I know like which year of school I was in at the time. So I was in like year four 
Um, so I would have been like eight, eight or nine at the time. Uh, meaning I lied when I made my account and I wasn't over thirteen. Um, but that would have been like around when I like started playing. Obviously, just like a stupid kid like everybody else playing on like mini clip and stuff. Hell yeah! You know, yep. Having like a browser with way too many toolbars, having to like turn the speakers down, like stop the theme tune playing out too loud, trying to stay in the computer room like too late, etc. You know, it was a it was a different. The mid noughties were a different time. Yo, flex yeah. how many toolbars? Better time. Tube. We flex how yeah, many two real. bars we had on our, on our <laughs> browser. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, I think on and off since 2004, like a couple of breaks oh, okay. around, around like EOC and yeah, yeah. maybe like one or two years like after all school release, there was a bit like meh because I was busy with uni and stuff like that. But... So I, I guess that can lead quite nicely into my second question, which is um, obviously you said that you've been working at Jagex now for six months. Um, for you... Uh, you know, you said you took a break around the pre-EOC time, so would you say that the old-school RuneScape game was more appealing to you versus the RuneScape free side of things? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think at the time, um, especially, um, I think when Old School came back out, it was... I was in... I would have been in, like, my last year of sixth form in UK school. I was in, like, a year 13. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with, like, a friend of mine, and we'd be sitting there with, like... Um, iPod touches on like the school Wi-Fi, like remote desktoping in, uh, like the really early days to like thieve cakes from Ardy and stuff to <laughs> try and like get high up on the scores. Like yeah, old school definitely pulled me back in. I'll say that these days though, I think RS3 is like a really good game. Like there's yep. so much like content in RS3. It's got like a really good like diversity of content as well. Um, I don't play it too often. Um, I think these days RS3 is good, but at the time it wasn't really for me. And old school obviously hit the nostalgia box, and I think since has kind of taken the game like the same feel and like all the core elements that made old school slap and just made them like a little bit better or like applied them in ways that it didn't used to yeah okay that's interesting okay actually then i have a question to expand on on your r3 um you know insights so you know your community manager one of one of the four right and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming you know you you have to you want to give some input right into uh, a bit of input in in terms of direction of what updates could come into the game so like what what are some of the new things like uh, you know as of probably the past few years RuneScape three has done that you think it's like oh wow that's actually a really you know interesting or like you know idea that that like tra transformed the game into a better kind of like game overall. In terms of like RS three and like obviously prefacing by saying that I don't think it's the kind of thing that would be like necessarily great to just pull from RS three and apply to old school. Yeah, but um, archaeology as a skill was superb. Like I thought that was so sick. Um, kind of like almost all of the different like training methods were at, like little break points where you get to like a new area and it would feel like a mini quest and it would be kind of like an AFK ish gathering skill with like a bunch of like puzzle solving, some lore stuff. I thought that was really cool. Um, invention as well, even though it's been like a long time since invention was added to RS three, kind of slaps. I think the Elder God War stuff is really neat too. Like the direction the story has gone there is sick the only thing that i don't like about it is i think that like the stakes for like rs3's main quest line with like elder gods and saving the universe or whatever is like difficult to top and rein it back in and i don't think yeah. hopefully the old school is ever going to go that direction but for like a different game and a different vibe i think it's sick yeah That's yeah fair. i think yeah those two new skills were pretty pretty nice for sure i, mm. I actually did get 99 like tried out invention to like 80 I mean, uh, archaeology to 80, and, like, you could discover, like, new lore and, like, all these places. Yeah, it was cool. About. You actually get to visit them for, for the first time. It was, like, mm -hmm. sick. Yeah. Do you yeah. think, uh, or is there, I don't, if you can't say it, it's absolutely fine, but do you think Old School RuneScape is going to be getting a new skill anytime in the, the near future, or even distant future? Is that something that's discussed at the office? I feel like people would hope to see one at, like, some point in the future, right? I mean... It's not for lack of trying in the past. Like, stuff's come close. I think, I don't know, it's one of those weird things, right? Like, I get why warding failed. I think maybe if, like, sailing had been pitched with, like, the same attention to detail as warding, that might unironically have passed. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. I think, like, even with, like, warding, it was what? Like, it was a... It was close-ish to 70%, yes, I feel like, by the final poll for warding. So, I don't know. I there's still... I think there's definitely Honestly. like an appetite for it with players and then i think by extension if there's an appetite for it with players then there's probably an appetite for it internally yeah yeah i i, I will say like <clears throat> the approach that i've seen so far from jagex i've been 
like we we often have discussions here about the polling system and you know sometimes we're not happy with it mm. and whatever but at the end of the day i i feel like the approach that most of the jmods have is if something doesn't get 75 percent it's like well we clearly haven't given this enough thought and we need to go back to the drawing board and really put our heads together and try to like now what the community are looking for because usually things pass by a, a landslide it's not l usual like it just you know just over 75 it's usually like up in the 80s or 90s um i yeah. feel like like tombs of Amasca is like a good example of that where it's like it, it it's phenomenal it's like if if the attention de to detail can be applied to a skill on the same level it, and like that thought process can be there like yeah i can i can for sure see Jagex bringing something something cool and new to the table so if we can jump back a little bit in time i'm just curious uh what your former background in the gaming industry is and like how exactly you, you became a jmod like how, how did this all become yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a long like weird story i feel like it kind of starts similar to how a lot of people maybe wound up in like content creation and stuff like way back in the day you know like hypercam 2 era kind of taking like an interest mm -hmm. in video making and stuff um eventually kind of you know i made some i made some videos back in the day i had like an rsmv of like numb by lincoln park i had like an easy <laughs> clues guide back when they were like a mil an hour uh because zami pages were so high i remember that yeah. um yeah and then obtained a super legal copy of after effects started doing like card montages and stuff like that and i think <laughs> um around the time where i started uni um where i was doing nothing really related to gaming or business at all i was doing biochemistry um to like supplement rent because i was in central london um i started like video editing again i started editing for like league of legends youtubers um and then that kind of like died out when uni became a really big focus and then i started working in student union bars um and then covid happened and to supplement my rent again because i was on furlough so i was still being paid like a little bit but not like enough to be able to like be like comfortable ish it was like really check the check um, I started editing some like old school RuneScape stuff. I threw together some memes. Uh, I think the one that probably blew up the most was that um, like how it feels tutorial skip with the drop it in the background. It blew up. Like I don't, I don't even know when that was. Like September twenty twenty, maybe sometime around there. Um, off the back of that, I started like editing for um, like pure spam. I did a video for Run Plays Games. Um, I was trying to. I was just basically trying to let people like let me edit shit for them uh, just to like supplement rent. I did like a I did like a handful of bits there, and then um, Aiza was working at a sports store called Method, uh, and he'd just been made an offer by Jagex um, before having like finished setting up their like old school team, um, and then Aiza was kind of looking around for people that he thought might be like a good fit, etc. I wound up like interviewing there, um, and then I kind of took a chance. I was like I was on the first year of like a postgraduate course. Um, I jumped off of that to kind of like get a foot in the door of the industry because academia was like kind of not fun. It was like interesting, but the day to day was like really boring. Um, and I was pretty like desperate to get a foot in the door. Um, so I spent about 10 months at Method with like a with like an old school team of content creators. Uh, in that time, you know, I ran uh, like a singles PvP tournament that cost like probably close to about like 30 grand. It wound up on like the front page of Twitch. I had like a wow. prize pool. Damn. At one point, you had like pure spam on West Ham casting in front of thirty-five thousand people. It wasn't without its drama, but it was that was sick. Uh, raised thousands of pounds for a charity called the Trevor Project. He specialised in like suicide prevention and kind of like crisis um, intervention for like LGBTQ plus youth in the US. Uh, it did that for about like ten months, and then some. Like I think a, a business relationship like broke down between the org and like a partner. And they had to like cut some. They had to like cut some people. They cut like a bunch of their like creator roster, uh, old school with it. Uh, off the back of that, I then moved into an influencer marketing role at a, um, a marketing agency in the UK. Um, so I was doing like influencer campaigns and stuff for uh, like brand accounts. So people like Pizza Hut Gaming, KFC Gaming, uh, like JBL Quantum, that kind of side of things. Uh, I did that for about six months, but it was like permanently crunched. Um, I don't really like my management that much, or like, I like my direct manager, but the people above, like, I think there were decisions made that just pissed me off, like, most of the time. Yeah. Um, 
And then Jagex had like a job opening. I'm so I've been going for so long, by the way. I'm really if this is tedious, no go like, no, no, I'm, no. This no. is interesting. I, I I like to understand how like this process happens because I can see how you've like built a history. You've had stuff to do with content creators and old school RuneScape. You met Aiza through Mefford. It's like. It, it's interesting to hear how this even came together in the first place. So yeah, keep going, like by all means. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd been there for about six months. I was miserable. My like, my real life had been like a movie um, <laughs> for like a long time and still is. Like there was just a lot of stuff going on. I had like uh, grandparents who like more or less raised me more than my parents and stuff, falling ill like repeatedly, etc. Work was just like a really bad stress. I handed in my notice. Uh, which was like a two month notice period. And then like Jagex had a job opening for a senior influencer manager, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of a long shot because I had about like 14 months experience in the industry. But I figured I'd shoot the shot because like I had pretty direct experience with old school influencers. Um, so I had, I sent my CV off. I waited like two weeks or so. I had an interview with um, like a recruitment manager, I guess. Then I had another interview with Mod Bolton. Then I had an interview with Aiza. Then I had an interview with Mod Huli, RS3 CM. Then I had another interview. Uh, after those five interviews, uh, they offered me an influencer manager position. Five interviews. Damn. Wow. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I think as well, because I didn't have much experience, like they wanted to be really sure, right? Um, and then, yeah, there may be an offer. Uh, the funding for that role, uh, if, like that role got cut after I had the offer made, which kind of sucked. And then something opened up in community management. Um, which uh, would have been kind of like creator leaning a little bit. So not quite influencer manager, um, but like some of the similar ish responsibilities. Uh, and I just like jumped at the opportunity to take it and it dropped everything. Uh, started, I don't know, it's like a bucket list thing, right? Like they yeah. say, like, never meet your heroes and all that stuff. And you can't really tell until you're like taking the plunge. But so what, what is your exact, um, from? what is your exact job title with Jagex as of now? I'm a community manager, um, the same as Modsani, the same as Modlite, and uh, Modaiza is like the lead community manager. Okay. Um, but even like with it, even though Sani, Light, and I all have like the same job title, I think our day to days look like a little bit different a lot of the time. Like Sani is kind of like the king of like socials, um, in terms of like social media calendars, just like planning and having like really like a really good sense of like scheduling scheduling social media and stuff like that. That's kind of like his wheelhouse. Uh, Mod Light is just a feedback queen. She's a process icon. Like <laughs> anything that would benefit from, um, I guess, like improve, improved process. So kind of like the way that you're like working on something, the way that information's gathered and presented, etc. Mod Light is just absolutely bonkers at. And then the side of things like the weekly recap with creators or a couple of other like creator -y bits per like project, I guess, that we can talk about later. That kind of falls to me. And then the man above it all pulling the strings is a uh, big Mod Aiza. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so effectively, Mod Aiza is the boss at, at this point. In this, mm -hmm. in this section, in this yeah. department. Yeah. And so, despite us all specializing, like we all, you know, like each week, one of us will have like the game update news post. Each of us will be assigned like a, a project that we kind of like take ownership of, right? So, like Mod Light has Quest Speed running, like you might have seen on Twitter. Uh, the Wardener's boss rework is one of mine. Uh, Modsani had TOA, he had like Leaves 3 back in the day. Um, so I don't know, like, we, all, we all do, there's like a big overlap and then there are like small like fringe bits that we do a bit differently. Okay. So something we were wondering actually was, at, you know, since we've been covering all these exciting new updates that are going to be coming out and being polled and stuff, um, we, we've noticed that there's been, there's kind of been like a trend, I guess, when it comes to like the YouTube, uh, sorry, the RuneScape social media side of things. Like, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. And I think, like, in the past probably, like, three months, things have things have changed. Like, we've got content Crazy. creators that are reading blog posts. We've got Twitter riddles and stuff of, you know, teams of a mascot stuff that only whoops can understand. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. We, we had a suspicion that maybe you were the man behind that. Um, did you have any part to do with that at all, or was that one of the uh, the uh, former J mods that you you mentioned a minute ago? Is <clears throat> I don't think there's there's really not a lot of Jagex that is kind of on like one person specifically. So I think like um, engaging a little bit better with social medias or like changing the like brand voice, I guess, to be a little bit more carefree. Um, it's kind of just like a team wide effort. So like all of the like 
ARG, mm. like the alternate reality games and the puzzles and stuff. That's like something that Sony absolutely loves. He loves puzzles. He loves alternate reality games. Uh, some of them are like shit posty stuff that you might have seen, like that weird like mm. Cerberus tweet forever ago, or like GF must be 99 defense because she blocked me, etc. <laughs> and to be like mod okay. light specials. And then <laughs> stuff like the weekly recap or um uh, like the everything you need to know video for TOA or Guns Chili trailers, etc., will be like stuff that I tend to take and that everybody I mean, we all have like input on what everybody does mm. right but okay it's like a team effort through and through like there's so, no one person responsible mm, for anything wait, okay. mod light is a shit poster yeah <laughs> nice. she's, she's, she's crazy she she's does got... me i've seen a lot of her we tweets. gotta have mod light on i gotta get an interview with the shit poster because i always <laughs> thought that runescape had some really shit posting potential for their twitter Oh, 100%. oh yeah def- i'm happy that they're doing some of that so it, it, within it, reason yeah like i don't know <laughs> yes, there's some stuff we could tweet that would bang likes but we could not tweet from the on screen like you know that gnome boy you know i don't know yeah. why it's yeah. so popular but it's it's something with that i, <laughs> I promise it'll go viral I, well, I, with the gnome I, i'll tell you one right <laughs> now i'll tell you one right now so i had somebody come up to me in <clears throat> on my stream the other day with the new uh ward that you get that you attach the arcane sigil to and i'll be mm-hmm. completely honest with you I don't like the visual way that it looks, personal preference. That's fair. And I pretty much said to my friend, I was like, have you ever like looked closely at this thing? It literally looks like a gnome child. So if you wanted to edit <laughs> yeah. the ward into like a little gnome and just <laughs> whack an arcane sigil on top of it, there, there's yeah, your idea. Just a, just a little go. dude living his best life, giving you plus 3% mage damage, you know? Like, literally. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a trim. I might even it's do it. It's a new trim. I might even do it this myself. It. But, just um, make it a new trim. Okay. <laughs> yeah, dude, make it the, uh, the add-on. Um, so I, I actually have a follow on question to that because we, I think we can all agree here that, you know, social media is an important thing, especially in this day and age. Um, mm-hmm. and, and there's just so many things that can be done from the old school RuneScape, like brand side of things. Um, so in the past, there's been waves of posts and creativity, uh, creativity when it comes to like the social media side on RuneScape from Jagex specifically. Um, so I guess my follow-up question is, is, is there an incentive for you guys to be creative and be posting? Um, or is it literally just a case of like, you guys want the game to do well and you want the updates to do well? Like, how, how's that looking for you guys? Um, what do you mean by incentive? Is in like, do we like get extra if like a tweet bangs or something? Or... I mean, I mean like, yeah, like, is it in the job, um, description or is, is it just something you're doing in your free time? No, I think it's just, I don't know, it's just like interacting with the community a little bit. It's like the only incentive, right? Like, Mm. we usually, I mean, you know, when we're doing like an update, we'll try like being pretty interactive with feedback and stuff, or like jumping in like the occasional Reddit thread, etc., like around Twitch. But I think generally it's just like an opportunity to, I don't know, get like a little bit more human than just every tweet being, this is what this week's game update is. Yeah. Uh, Instead, like, you know, here's a stupid joke, etc. But no, there's no like incentive. It's just like, it's good to do, right? Man, that's I crazy. Think, like, yeah. that, that's yeah, just like, that, humanizing um, brands matters quite a lot. A hundred percent. I brands, but like, yeah. yeah. I, I agree, we but all, I, all, um, you guys sorry. should be getting like, there should be like an incentive or something where it's like, okay, look, our tweet or whatever has reached this many people. There's been this growth. It's like, especially when it's almost just coming from a place of passion and it's not like, oh, I've got a tweet on the RuneScape Twitter. It's like the fact you guys are doing that in your own time. I don't know, no, man. We do have a designated slot for shit posts, uh, or like <laughs> fun Fridays, etc. I sometimes it like falls by the wayside a bit, but that I don't know. It is part of it. Yeah, it, we, I don't think any of us really see it as like an extra thing. Like we might just have like a stupid thought during the week and think this is going to be funny to tweet and then just tweet it. Yeah. I, I, Once we saw the the RuneScape shit post, we all thought that you guys got someone new right to run the twitter and you were paying them bank because it was so good because <laughs> if you go and look at wendy's i mean wendy's got so much promotion just oh, from wendy's that wendy's go mask off on their twitter man we could yeah. never do that <laughs> <laughs> but no one cared yeah. about wendy's until they put off the mask you know it's it's just that's how much profit and eyeballs come into the social media aspect so when we saw you guys shit post we're like they they hired someone we did not know you guys were taking up slots for shit posting and puzzles. I, I, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah, think no, we tend um, to be pretty organized with it. But... Yeah, no, I'm happy to hear that. Um, you know, <clears throat> within your your job and stuff, you you guys get to be uh, you know, fairly free, right, autonomous with like how you guys approach, um, you know, what kind of promotions, you know, what kind of posts you want to do, 
Because yeah, I mean, yeah, before you know, it felt very standard, right? It was like there, there wasn't much variety in what type of things you, you know, not you guys in general, but like the team before would do. There wasn't a whole lot of variety, but I think this is a really nice thing, a nice touch that you guys do. I think you have like a really good, I guess, a synergy with each of your, you know, commu- uh, community members that run the promotions. So yeah, really good variety. Keep it up. Yeah, that's what I would say. <clears throat> Dude, absolutely. Now, we're talking a lot about the J mod and the process. And honestly, you should write a book because that, that was a lot, you know, to get you up to the road to J mod, which could be a really cool YouTube series, you know. <laughs> um, I was wondering, what is kind of the average day for you? You know, you get into the headquarters. What, what, oh, what do you, God. if you can tell us? <laughs> uh, there, there is no average day, I think, at Jagex, really. Like, my, my job's fully remote. Like, I don't need to go into the office. So. Mm. My first meeting at the day is like at nine fifteen. I'll climb out of bed at like eight forty five. I'll um mm. I'll have a really healthy trip to the shops, so maybe smoke, which I'm trying to cut down on, <laughs> and then like roll into you know we'll have like a, a stand up meeting in the morning where we kind of talk about what we're doing for the day. Um, but in terms of like the day to day, it really depends on the week. So some weeks it'll be I'll be putting together the blog post, and then it'll be making sure everything goes okay with the blog post. So like you've written it, you've got to send it off to like editorial to make sure that, you know, it's readable. Um, then you need to spend some time doing all of the like HTML so that it actually like works on the website and stuff. Then it has to go out. You've got to get all the surrounding socials ready, um, gather all the feedback afterwards, lead meetings where you talk about the feedback, chat with the devs about kind of what are the immediate next steps following feedback. Maybe you have to put like another blog out. Maybe you have to make changes on the blogs. Like some weeks will look like that. Other weeks will be, you know, it's not your game update, but uh, will the boss rework is coming out. So like start writing a design blog or it'll be fresh start worlds are coming out. Let's like talk with a bunch of creators and maybe try and do some more like marketing type things. Or maybe it'll be, there's nothing specific happening. Let's like think of some community initiatives. Um, mm. It's like every day is kind of different, which is what I like about it. Like when I was talking about like my ADHD goblin gamer brain, like if I were doing the same thing every single day, I would lose my fucking mind. Like, I'd just be so miserable all the time, so, I don't know. I think, like, just how spontaneous and how different every day is is, like, actually one of the, like, better parts of the job for me, that it's yeah. not just the same thing every time. I mean, I is think... Is there ever, like, a, a code red? Like, you wake up and you're, like, your pager's ringing or something, like, Tebow's are spawning again, like, <laughs> like what's a hectic day at the office for you? Um, a hectic day? I don't know, it kind of depends, right, like... He's only been there six months, by the way, so... I'm trying to think True. if there's yeah, been yeah. any... Any major thing? I'm guessing race three. Right. Race three so stuff. yeah, race three probably be there. Oh, you mean like last week? Um, yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. I feel like the the code reds in like my experience so far. Uh, we have so many people like playing the game and doing all kinds of weird stuff that like if something is like really busted, it will happen like pretty soon after we've made a change. Generally speaking, so like with um the TOA hot fixes or like the TOA balancing changes last Thursday at time of recording, um. What date was that? Like Thursday, September 1st, right? Um, they came out, obviously they like really weren't popular. Um, so it's like kind of ride the day out, um, meet on Friday to just talk about like, yo, this like missed the mark, what do we do? Um, and then having to, you know, we kind of like sat down like the community managers, the the devs, like the team who worked on TOA, etc. We spoke from like 11 until 12. And then it's like, here's what we're going to do. Um, and then it's a case of now we need somebody to like write up a blog to like sit with the devs and understand exactly what they're doing now, what they're going to do next week, etc. Um, I don't, it's not really like damage control, but it's just like useful communication, right? Like you want to make sure that you don't like, if you've like really, if we've like really messed it up or something, it's like important, I guess, to, we couldn't, we couldn't have let the sentiment we were getting last week sit over the weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was like we kind of had to like scramble to make sure that like stuff was done for Friday. And it was like a complete one eighty. You know, like, I think we did good work last week. Yeah. I, I think the it way sounds... you dealt with it was great as well. I, I like the wording that was used of um we understand it was something along the line I'm paraphrasing. It was something like we understand that all of these implementations happening at once is quite harsh compared to what you guys have had. So we're gonna slowly implement it going forward. And I, I think yeah. that that was for sure a good way of dealing with that situation. I think Arcane said as much on like the Q and A that he was on afterwards, right? That like I think a lot of those changes in like a vacuum or individually probably don't look too bad, but it's then all clumped once together. Once you start like compounding or like doubling down and tripling down on stuff like that, um, yeah. 
yeah, I don't know. I, I think I guess, a bit tricky. since we're talking about t TOA, uh, yeah, we we get, so there's so much stuff that has happened in the last month, and like like I said, mm. me and Rice Cup, we have been absolutely slaying it at the pyramid. We've just been there the whole time. We're in the pyramid prison right now, and um. <laughs> You know what? I had a con. I, my my real life friend that doesn't even play RuneScape, but he enjoys gaming and he reads articles, came up to me like a week ago, and he was like, "I heard the the new raids good in RuneScape," and he's a kind of dude that like he hadn't played it in fifteen years, and I I explained it to him like this. I was like, "So, Jagex have tried to do something here, which is something they haven't really done so successfully in the past, where they have released end game content." And instead of just allowing, like, the top, I don't know, like, 5 or 10% of people that play to be able to enjoy it, they've allowed you to completely customize the difficulty. And basically, it's meant that people who usually couldn't just do TOB or Chambers on release now have access to this new content. And it's like, the actual update is being enjoyed by so many more players versus the model that we used to have. Um, and that, that's the way that I described it to my friend, so he could, you know, understand as, like, a normie, you know, casual player that doesn't really know how these things work, right? Um, so I, I guess, you know, naturally, like, what was your involvement with the Tombs of Damascus? Like, what did you work on? What was the deal, man? I will answer you. Now you need to do a cut. I'm going to piss myself, but I will answer your question when I get back. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we're not cutting uh, it. I'm sorry. Probably too, probably too sense. I'm really sorry. Oh, like good, a man. Tiny bladder. Putting it right at the front. Man's like, I got, I got to <laughs> think that one over, man. <laughs> he was like, building suspense. He's like, hey, I got to piss. <laughs> Dude, I can't. I, have you logged into uh, RS today, Ray? Have you seen the new rewards? <clears throat> I mean, I read the blog. Oh, yeah. dude, it's it, so they've basically added like um, they've added like kits so you can customize your avas. You can make it like gold now. Mm -hmm. Same with the max cape, so it matches the Missouri armor. Mm -hmm. uh, they've allowed you to change. You know the fang, the stabby thing. So they've changed yeah. that. Uh, they've allowed you to like give it like an ornament kit so it looks bigger and more badass. And yeah, yeah. I'm not I know really re. What is the last one? I'm not too sure. Is, is it like a pet transmog or what is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Transmog. So yeah, they've mm -hmm. added like I knew they were pet transmog. They always do that, which is sick. So that I'm, other I'm, stuff's kind of wild though. I'm guessing that's like all <laughs> of the other mini bosses that you fight inside the tombs of uh, Amascus, right? Mm -hmm. By the way. Uh -huh. For any of the viewers watching this podcast, we disappeared for two weeks. All right, we knew it was happening, bro. We kept getting comments on the podcast channel saying, "Don't burn out." You know, you're uploading like five times this week, but it was just Did because guys... there was so much content the... happening. Yeah. Like we had to, Did and you guys now ever put the clips on though, like the clips. I bro, cut? we have been me and Rice Cup have literally been doing Tunes with Mascus all day for like I could just over make a week go now. Live. I was wondering, they were just sitting there. I was like, I think. I could... I think it probably is a little bit too late at this point, just because it, it's like from two weeks ago, so it's like, it needs to be we fresh. put the Tasty's Nuts, Tasty's mm. Nuts one, that's, that's, that has nothing to do with relevance. Yeah, yeah, no, we can still put that up whenever. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that would, yeah, we should actually, that's a good one. <laughs> By the way, I'm not going to cut this out of the podcast, so it's going oh. in, boys, this part. <laughs> Um, what was I did? Oh, dude, I just had a thought in my head. Oh, Ben's back, anyways. It's fine. Hey, so Yo, about the queen. Oh, <laughs> oh man, it's too soon, no, brother. No, 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 no. Kidding. All right, do you want me to just like roll off? Or? Yeah, go for it. Let's hear it. Um, in terms of like my involvement with TOA specifically, it's not really, it's, there wasn't really a lot before the content released from me, really. I jumped into like a handful of playtests and stuff, but um I think the the project and like a lot of the kind of like initial blog posts and a lot of the kind of like marketing effort was a lot of um like Sony's work. Um obviously in terms of like people who are like properly involved. Uh like Ed Arcane, Elena, Husky, Halo, Curse, Surma, Jerv, Grub, Brow, West, uh, others like uh all wow. the people who've been like working on the project for months if not like north of a year right like for me my like main engagement was just like a couple of a couple of bits so like um some work on like the the trailers that like guns Chili made for toa um the 
what you need to know video with tasty obviously the first week of like feedback gathering and then the the like blog post that went out for that and then the blog post that went out the day after that we spoke about just a second ago um but in terms of like pre-release not really a whole lot to be fair I, like, I played it a bit i gave some feedback but um you know there's like a bunch of like big gamers who you have like really high value feedback and are used to doing it because they work in qa or whatever or they work as devs anyway so it's just kind of along for the ride Okay. It was a bit surreal to be able to play it early though, because um, mm -hmm. I was jumping into playtest like really early into my time at Jagex, and it was just so I don't know. They had you. Really they had you playtest. Like it. It, That's crazy. Were, they, they just were had you, you able to play day it. one because you played early, or did you have to skip like solo? Did um day one, I I think I would have been able to. I don't think I did play any on day one. I could definitely have played with like other J mods, right? But um. In you terms just stacking of stacking items because you know all the mechanics. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, no, we definitely would have ha had to wait for like the first normal mode completion, which obviously came in pretty quickly, right? Because normal mode, like one fifties on release, were like not too bad. That's still not that bad. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think I would have been able to, but um, I just didn't really. I was more interested in like watching other people play it. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, for sure. And I, have, man, I, I don't think you should underplay the importance of like. The presentation of wrapping updates right so i kind of tie this into like a youtube video right where it's like you can have the best video in the world it could be fantastic it could literally be the best video in the world but if you don't present it correctly with a good title thumbnail and i'm connecting that to like the guns chili thing and you know all of the uh social media work that you did it's like it doesn't get that initial hype or the e even the exposure that it could potentially have so even though like maybe you didn't have too much to do with the development side of things, it's like you still played a big part, I would say, in the role of its success. And I had a friend that doesn't even play talking to me about it. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. even I don't even know if that would that conversation would have had if it wasn't for all of the publicity on social media. So I, I I I don't hear him asking me about TOB or like chambers. Like that mm. was never a conversation, you know? I think it's it's like a weird one because like the impression I get like having like been like a player beforehand is it's probably like the the most concerted i think like marketing effort for a piece of content maybe outside of something like um trailblazer or like shattered relics mm. but in terms of like main game mainstay content i think it's probably like the hardest jagex have ever gone on like I that agree. kind of a push yep. but like i think the thing is as well with like raids 3 being like the first raid in however long and like mentioning you know this like real push for like accessibility and customizability I don't think there was any universe in which it wouldn't have gone at that publicity anyway. Like the, it's like it's for most people the best content the game's ever seen, right? Yeah. Like I don't think there's any universe in which I I wouldn't have been surprised by people talking about it regardless. Okay. And like sure, I don't know. We, we juiced it a little bit, right? But I think the content's so good that even if we'd done nothing for it, like word would have spread. I think. Yeah. But it's just nice to see a game that you play your whole life hyping up an update you know mm -hmm. what i mean to an extent where you didn't think they were capable of it and it gives you <laughs> a lot of hope for the future no, yeah it is because yeah. you see a lot of games and they hype their updates and they they you know i mean i sort of got facebook ads like who the hell even watches those you know what i mean and it's it's hard to really gain a, a grip when it comes to certain genres and you guys did so well with raid 3 and it makes me go what could they do for the wilderness layer or uh, the, the new servers coming out or whatever they're going to be coming out with how how well could they hype it up with what they've learned already and it just kind of makes me yeah. wish for raid the 3. quality of the hype is mm -hmm. different you know yeah the yeah. quality better much better yeah. that was feels like, like a really yeah like a really good concerted effort by you guys you know and like yeah you guys dish it out really well for sure yeah no, i appreciate that i think it's one of the weird things like a lot of other games have like a lot of other mm. mmos especially have like really obvious marketing beats i guess where they're kind of like working on expansion models and stuff like that when you're like a, there aren't many games on the planet really that try and deliver like some form of like a content update with like the same kind of cadence that old school does so i think like that's why it's a little bit trickier right because you're always juggling so much there's always so much going on that um I guess it's a little bit harder sometimes to like put your like full body behind something, but with something like Rage Three, it's like such an obvious like this is this is the update, right? Like this is the shit. Like we should probably like pump it. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know what's crazy? Like leading up until this podcast, like we've wanted to have you on for a while now, and because TOA has been <laughs> fucking amazing, it's like 
I, I had to sit here a few days ago and I was thinking, Mod Goblins contributed to so much recently, and I was trying to think of what the updates were because I've just been so consumed by TOA. <laughs> I feel like been contributing to much. <laughs> dude, I feel like it's almost like fucking shadowed everything because it's just been this was... glorious piece of content. And it's like, wait, I what was were... racking my brain trying to remember anything you do. <laughs> 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 oh god. Um. So I have a question here, actually. And uh, this is a, a personal question when it comes to old school oh. RuneScape. So, like you said, you said that you hosted a PvP tournament, and you had Pure Spam mm -hmm. uh, do the commentary for it. Uh, so, well, tying yeah, into that, who, who were the commentators for that, by the way? We did we did four regional qualifiers that started as open qualifiers up to a round of five twelve, and then we did a broadcast round of one hundred and twenty eight, I think, across two days. Wow. So we did EU, we did US West, we did US East, and we did uh, Oceana uh, like one weekend after the next. So it was about like 16 hour weekends for me. Wow. Um, and then we did like a grand finals at the end. In terms of like people that we had casting, we had uh, like West Ham Pure Spam, we had like Poison Potion hosting, we had Ron Plays Games, we had EV Skate, we had Ditter Bitter. Um, I feel I've probably missed like one person. Um, so I'm just going to hope they don't watch. <laughs> and if they do, no, I'm sorry. Like, but, I, I, I do. No, we had like a whole bunch yeah. of people. I do, I do vaguely remember it, but I, I watch a lot of the tournaments that happen. So I'm like, and also I'm not super active on Twitch, to be totally honest. Um, but mm. my question is, um, where do you think the your passion lies, and where do you think that you know you would be best utilized, uh, working for Jagex, like? what area of the game, or is there something specifically that you would like to give more attention to? Um, for me, really, like, passion-wise, I'm obsessed with, like, early and mid-game routing. I love, like, neat, like, macro-efficient progression and stuff like that. Like, I love looking at, like, some, like stuff like Boti or Alfie or Osiris's Iron Man guys, etc. Like, stuff like that. I love, like, that kind of I guess like the way in which people like break the game down for like rooting, like I like that kind of efficiency quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but like the mid game especially is like probably what I'm like actually more interested in. I think it's like a real, it's like a real like crucial point of the game in general. Like that kind of, you know, maybe you're in like the your stats are kind of sitting between like sixty and seventy five, and suddenly shit starts to take a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And I think that most people who have like made like a handful of Iron Men. Especially in like the times before Gauntlet, we'll probably lament like the mid game grind to eighty seven Slayer, etc., to like unlock the game and stuff. Yeah, like that's weirdly that's like the part of the game that like interests me the most, and like group content especially. I don't think we do with like the rise of Iron Man. I don't think there's enough of a diversity of group content as I'd like from an MMO, which is maybe like a spicy take. A lot of people just like to play solo, right? But Maybe, I think TOA gets the balance kind of right there. Like, solo mm -hmm. is viable, but I don't think it's the most efficient necessarily, but it's not inefficient per se. Yeah. You know, I, I get asked a question quite a lot, and I, I tell you my complete transparency here. I, I haven't been a mid game level player for about three or four years now, as in, I haven't had an account in that bracket in years. So I haven't been playtesting the content that came out. Um, God, I don't know what the spider boss is called on Zaya. Is it like San Chosiv or something like that? Sorachnus. Like, yeah, yeah. Think of Sorachna, bro. <laughs> yeah. So I, I get asked all the time, people are like, Rixie, uh, I've been doing the Barrows. What, 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 what's the next <laughs> what's, the, what's the next natural progression of boss for me to go to? And I'm like, in, in my mind, there's like a disconnect. I'm like, where do you go from the Barrows upwards? It's like Dagonoff Kings, maybe, but it's a bit of a leap from Barrows to DKs. So I guess if that's the place where you, you know, you're interested in, uh, do Jagex have any future plans for maybe some sort of like mid tier level bosses that are coming our way or anything along those lines? Or am I just yeah. mistaken where I haven't been there for such a long time that there already is? Bro, oh, Moss Giant Boss, baby. Moss Giant Boss. <laughs> Hell yeah. I can eat yeah that maybe you'd know what came next if Rice Cup had done part two for his PVM ladder, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, um, one day. <laughs> but I don't, th I, don't, I don't know that there's anything like immediately in the oh, works. I just like, I early game and mid game to me, even like non professional like, it's difficult to get, it's difficult to get friends who have never played RuneScape into RuneScape because it's like, you know, 
you play 400 hours and then we can do some shit together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or I have to like, you know, like put ankle weights on and just play really slowly to kind of like keep in line with you, right? Yeah. Um, And I think especially MMOs for like a lot of like word of mouth, you know, like so many people get into MMOs or like any game these days because they have like a friend who plays, maybe like the boys are all playing, maybe, maybe their like partner plays or something like that and they just want to, you know, try it out. And I think that's like difficult with old school. So I think like the activity advisor or... It is the activity advisor, yeah. It has like a different name yeah. internally. I just got it. Calling it right? Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, too. I mean, it was rolled out to everyone this week, right? But like yeah, stuff like that, it. I think is actually kind of important. Um, and just like content that I think keeps players engaged all the way through. Um, so nothing immediately in the works, but it's like on my first Q and A uh, appearance where I didn't say much because I was on with like Ash, Aiza, and Kira, and nobody gave a single fuck what I was talking about. <laughs> I was with Ash, Kira, and Aiza. The gods. Uh, I'll answer my questions and I'll sit quietly. But um, they asked like if I could add anything, what would I add? And um, I, I keep thinking about like Demonheim, not Dungeoneering, but just like Demonheim in general is this kind of like this like super scalable. Um, through like all stages of the game, piece of like group procedural content that you can use as like a constant check mark of like your account's progress, I guess. Like, you know, you went away, you got some like woodcutting levels or something, and now suddenly, like when you're in Demonheim with your pals or whatever, you can like chop like a higher tier of tree or something like that, right? Um, that is very true. That is very true. So it's I don't know, like just stuff to do with people that like helps you retain your friends in like the early and mid game, I think is something that's like quite important and like a little bit slept on which i also yeah. completely understand because i think like a lot of the like louder voices uh really want like you know pvp stuff pvm stuff which is totally fine like i'm happy with either <laughs> but there's this like whole group of players um there's like casual players who are just really difficult to actually like hear from because like i think these kind of casual players they're not even talking on social media etc they're they're just logging in they're vibing they're logging out they're not leaving feedback. Like they're difficult. It's difficult to understand what those people want, and yeah. I'd like to find ways of taking more of those people and getting them invested enough to be able to tell us what they think about the game, so that we could like grow the game that way. Yeah, yeah. it never dawned on me that because I always I have a friend that's incredibly bad, but he always wants to play in PK, and I'm like, I, I can't PK with you. You're you're too low level. I can't boss <laughs> with your ass. I can't do anything <laughs> with your ass. You want to do some pest control or something? <laughs> Big on the pest a, control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a big disconnect, right? If you have some buddies you want to play with, there's not really much to do. This sounds like an amazing idea. It just dawned on me that, that this needs to be in RuneScape because there's too many people just not even talking in Edgeville or, you know, fletching their little logs at the bank. You used to be able to go up and just have a nice conversation. Ain't no one talking no more. It's just uh, people playing and EH. What's what's the word? EHP. EHP. Efficient hours yeah. played. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's all it is, man. Back when I used to play, I'd hang out with my boys. We we wouldn't do anything. We would just sit there, right? But nowadays, you gotta do a little something, you know. So I, I would like yeah, to see no, something like yeah, that happen. You, in yeah, you definitely brought up a good point, though, Ben, about the fact that yeah, there's definitely a lot of players that that are. Just not, you know, you don't hear from them. And and to really tie in with, like, certain updates is, like, you know, a lot of the updates that gets the most controversy, right, tends to be endgame stuff, right? Because, you know, endgame mm. is what typically affects the game massively, right? Whether it's, like, the resources come from, from it or, or the items that will devalue older stuff. But mm -hmm. I think there's definitely a lot of mid-level updates that could happen, right, which would have a far less negative impact like you know less drama um from the high level players because you know the the effect of it is you know whether it's resources drops should not be that big of a deal and and it's much safer right it's also much safer because like i said it's just not impacting the game extremely in any real way and i do i do think that there are definitely a lot of players that play this game casually and enjoy playing it casually but they probably could you know, do with just more mid-level updates. Yeah. And and the updates don't necessarily need to be like, oh, it'll make you level up like a lot faster than before or whatever. I think they just have to be engaging things that could give you, you know, like a little bit better XP or slightly better money than what you what they're used to. Like, and that's pretty much it, right? And then they, they could probably just be content with staying there for as long as they need to. Because like, I think some people are just happy to just play casually you know and and they don't really necessarily care 
about going above because those are the people that you're not going to hear from, you know, because they, they just keep to themselves and just, you know, enjoy whatever minimal time they have. <clears throat> so I think, I think those players are important too, even if you don't hear from them. But yeah, yeah I yeah. feel like there could be more updates in that range. For sure. I think like Guardians of the Rift is like a perfect example, right? Of something that wasn't like a crazy increase in XP rates, but it's just like more fun than ZMI. Uh, obviously, it's like way worse than something like Lava's, but it's just like engaging. It's like social skilling because you can actually do it and like talk to people. You kind of can with like something like Giant's Foundry as well, but it's like a bit involved. Same with like Winter Todd, kind of actually is okay. And it makes fire making a little bit more interesting than just lighting big lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah like particularly that, like, um, some, some more mid level group bossing could be good i think yeah, i think sure. you know you can add a lot more and it'll just not really you know people won't talk too much bad things about it because the effects should not be too too negative on, on anything yeah really yeah i feel yeah. that it doesn't really move the needle heavily right exactly I, I like I, and i think that's always good too i mean like wood cutting with the boys picking flax with the homies yeah I mean... that was that was like mod squid's game jam pitch i think he did uh, mm -hmm. that like way of the forest thing which was like a return to like social wood cutting yeah that, that would be great cool. Yeah, I used to like th said in the Twitch chat and like spoke about it a bit. Like something like shooting stars feels like a bit weird that you're punished for doing it with other people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, like you get less. Like it's worse the more people are there for shooting stars, right? It should probably not be the case. Like just stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Like you're probably never gonna see a return to like packed out yew trees just talking about how much you love Lincoln Park's meteor <laughs> album. <laughs> but like I don't know. I, yeah. There's definitely stuff like I think that's like part of what makes it like good to retain people as well. Just like making them feel like a part of a community by encouraging player to player interaction. Which is something that we've maybe lost a little bit with Iron being so popular and with there being so many worlds that if you're in those kind of like mid and early game areas you don't really bump into many people. Um, especially on pay to play, but yeah, I, I yeah, think I think, think yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Min. no, go, go for race. Oh, yeah, I think I think honestly, the culture, uh, like in terms of influencing what what people feel like they should do in the game, has changed a lot because you know, of course, if you watch your favorite content creators, they all tend to be like you know maxed out or they have like the best gear, you know, like they're like the best players in the game, whatever. I feel like obviously that kind of pushes everybody in you know wanting to get to that point whereas back in the day it didn't really matter like you know what i mean like people knew that obviously like the, if somebody had a fire cube they were like the best of the best but it's not like <laughs> it was yeah. like shoved in your face all the time because you know you wouldn't be watching you know yeah. all these content creators all the time <laughs> right back in the day so you just be like wow dude i get my barrels I'm, I'm i'm already like a pro like you know you don't need to be at that like dragon you know chain body fire cape stage to feel like yo i'm i'm there i feel like so much so much nowadays with how social media works is like you know people you know they progress right they, they get better gear they reach all 70 to get barrels but then they don't they don't feel as satisfied as they used to because then they're like ah oh, damn you know all these streamers i watch all these youtubers i watch they all have like torva you know or something and they're like ah oh, it's just i'm not i'm never gonna get there you know and they feel bad and they always ask like Yo, is my account good? Like, you know that question? I get asked that too much. They're like, is my <laughs> account good? Can you check my stats? I'm like, dude, like, you don't need me to tell you that. You should be, you know, just happy. enjoy like, your I, time. If you had fun playing the account, it's yeah. a good account, right? But, but yeah, yeah exactly. But the thing is, is that they it's hard to feel that way nowadays, I guess, because that, you know, you're just constantly exposed to people with like the best gear, the best stats, and the best everything, right? So it's like really hard to like make that mid-level content feel as valuable nowadays. I mean, of course, there's a group of people that don't watch social media and stuff. Great for them. You know, they'll probably still feel amazed, but it's hard. I don't know how much of that exists, you know, how much of that community exists anymore. I think like, the it... void of the social media aspect, you know, yeah. it's a challenge. It's a challenge trying to like get, I feel like it's kind of like a, like a really unhealthy kind of like interaction between social media and the players is like, you know, a lot of them just completely lose lose their value, their own personal enjoyment value, because they're constantly comparing themselves to like all the content creators that are out there. So, yeah, so, I, yeah, I it's mean, really it's inspirational, hard to, right? It's just it, like it, sometimes it's inspirational. Look at the, yeah, <laughs> look it, at the magazine models. It's yeah, not it's me, hard. Bro. I feel like yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like it, it's it's like inevitable, maybe, but I feel like maybe there's a way to. Kind of like encourage players to just be you know more more happy with where they are you know right and just like set their own goals set their own standards i don't know if that could 
it's possible. But if it is, I, mean, I think the game would be. They're, they're kind of even working on it. I, I feel like yeah. um, with the I, I can't think of the name of it. Forgive me. Is it the incentive list that you now get in game where it gives you like hints at what you should be doing next? Uh, yeah, the TV be, track. Yeah. 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 But this yeah. is yeah. yeah, it's only got quests on it right now, but I think we're planning to expand that pretty heavily. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's a really interesting subject, actually, when you think about it, right? It's like, like I said, I get a lot of people asking me what I should do after, like, the Barrows, and it's like, I, I usually say something along the lines of, well, you know, your best bet is to maybe do the DKs and you got 70 stats, I'm like, but really, if you just go and train your stats, you're going to be better off for it, right? And that's the thing, right? Like with the game now, is that like the best thing for you to do really is probably just AFK at yeah. crabs for like a yeah. few weeks that, that, and then just come back zone. with Max Melee. And that's <laughs> like, it. That's yeah. that's literally what I say. I'm like, go go to Nightmare Zone. I'm like, this is the setup you need to use. Grab Obsidian, Berserker Necklace, etc. Get your stats up, and then you can do all of the content. You don't need to worry about it. So I, I guess like, is, is this a conversation that the J mods have often, which is like, how do we get that sort of, like, mid-game experience, like, more linear with going up to the end-game experience? Because at this point, to me, it kind of seems like, well, you get, you work pretty hard, you get barrel gloves, you get, like, 70 stats, you do a little bit of PVM, and then everybody's just like, well, you just need to get 99s, man, so you need to go and train for a month, and then you can access the rest of the game. So, is this a conversation that, like, happens a lot between the J mods? Because I, I just... I got a lot here, so sorry. Let me just add on to this. Like like we say, there's not too many new players coming into old school RuneScape, and it's hard to keep new players here. But there's for sure a lot of people, like you said, that are in that mid-tier, and you want to get feedback from those players. On the other hand, you've got people like us, and I imagine there's a lot of people like us that are doing the end game content. We've got max stats, etc. So I, I imagine as a J-Mods, the J-Mods must be torn between do we appease the people that are here for the long term and we give them end game content all of the time? Or for the longevity sake of the game, do we try and get it so that people don't leave before that point and have more of a, a fulfilling journey up until then? Sorry, that's that's a lot there to like no, decompose, fine. but so, yeah. Um starting with the point about like it is this like a conversation that happens a lot internally. Um in my time here, like not really at the moment, but then I've not really conversations about things like the roadmap and like trends that or like trends in feedback or trends in like player numbers that might inform roadmaps or something that happens like above me yeah uh, we still get like a bunch of input is my understanding but like at the end of this year and like toa etc i've not really been privy to much of that stuff um a lot of the kind of content that we put out is set in set in stone relatively like pretty far in advance um but I think it's a conversation that's likely already happened and just like manifesting itself in like different ways, right? Because it's not a case of like, do we do stuff for end game players or do we do stuff for other players? It's like, why not both, right? Like TOA was in development at mm -hmm. the same time that Guardians of the Rift begun development and was finished. The same time that Giants Foundry begun development and was finished. Uh, maybe Quest Speed running might appeal to like some of the kind of like nostalgic players, uh, that kind of stuff coming out. Like, I don't think there's any reason that it can't appeal to both with like the way that like our devs are structured in like a bunch of different teams like okay. smaller teams etc so like we have like a team who like works on something like the activity advisor or like the new user experience as it were um so there's no reason we can't do both and there's no reason that they don't like work well together anyway right like if you're like an end game player trying to get like a friend in to do end game content with you then like having that mid game content makes it an easier sell and then you've got a new power to do end game shit with Similarly, if you're like a if you're in that mid game and you keep seeing like all of this new cool end game content added, they become like things for you to chase, right? They're like they're like long term goals, right? Like they're not going anywhere. It's like Chambers was added in what twenty seventeen, like January twenty seventeen, I think, like really early, and that's still there now as like something for people to chase as like an end game piece of content, right? The same as top, like it doesn't go anywhere, and it's still like a constant pull or like a motivation for you to progress. So I don't know. I don't think the two stances are like at odds with each other. I don't think there's any reason why you do one and not the other. I think they both kind of like feed into each other. Yeah. I, I think they're both definitely very important things because on one hand it's like, you know, the players that have been around for a long time, they're the loyal subscribers, etc. It's like 
You want those guys to be happy with the game. And at the same time, it's like you want people that are coming into the game or trying to get to that point to enjoy the journey. Um, so yeah, I, 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 that gives me a lot of comfort, actually, hearing that you guys can work on both of those things at the same time instead of having I mean, to put all your eggs. content do both, right? Like TLA does both. A hundred percent. You can jump into zeros about, and oh, you can jump true. into 50s and like the 70s. And then, you know, you've got people doing 500s, 510s, like Port Cazard and Noob type. We are both just like unfathomably good players and stuff. Like, yeah. And with like the Fang ornament kit seeing at 500, whether you think that's too high or not, it's like a chase goal, right? Like the content's not been out very long. It is doable. People will find new ways to make it more doable. Like TOA does both. There's yeah. no reason that other content can't. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if you can share this information. Sorry, Min. Just okay. real quick on that Probably subject. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, but like, so obviously like TOA is the exception here, it's unlike the release of Chambers and also TOB, although there is the beginner mode now on TOB, but like, I don't know if you can say this or if it's too early days, but I have people that play specifically on mobile, I've got a guy in my chat on Twitch who's like, I've got base 70s, I'm like level... I think he's like level 80. He's like, I don't even know if I can do the quest, but Nerf Curse sounds, sands. And I'm talking to him, and I'm like, man, I tried to do that with an Ellie and full Torva, and I had to teleport three times from the boss because I was just brute forcing. I it was the um the second boss on that quest that's like underneath after you do like the maze. I was trying to kill him with oh, Melia. Kite it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, I got messed up by that guy, and I didn't want to die because I didn't know if I was going to, like, have to, you know, whatever. Um, But he literally was doing TOA on mobile with, mm -hmm. like, 70 stats. And I was thinking, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, and he got, like, four completions. I was well impressed. Does he have a stylus, bro, or just his fingers, dude? Dude, he must be a beast. He, he said, Sweaty, he's, do you know what he said to me? He said the hardest part about it is um because he's such a low level he'll apply for parties in the uh ffa world and they'll get kicked all the time because he, they think he's gonna be shit but he's actually like he's actually a god he's just got terrible stats and it goes back to the whole you just need to train mate and you'll be fine um but sorry back to the question so do you guys do you are you monitoring i'm, a, I'm assuming you are right the difference with the amount of like people doing the content completions etc for toa versus the prior releases like tob and chambers is that something the oh. data is that being looked at yeah yeah of oh. course I okay mean, like, that kind of data is what like informs balancing decisions as well right like but yeah no yeah is the short answer. <laughs> so, ha yeah. have there been any conclusions that have been drawn from, like, this different approach of releasing content, or is it too early to say that? I think the conclusion, even on, like, the eyes of the players, it's not, like, controversial to say, like, obviously it's successful, right? Like, TOA is coming up on 2 million, maybe it's past 2 million, I don't know, I can't be bothered to log in and check, but at the time I record, TOA is, like, past 2 million completions total top yeah. in terms of, like, normal mode completions, so that's, like, 5.5 million overall. Wow, um, is that oh my god, I didn't know that. That's I nuts. Think wow. You can you can see it on the board, like in game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, wow, okay. So this has so been a major like, su major success, like in Jagex design. Is that why the servers are so bad? <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> I think yeah, your best bet Kieran gave like a really good answer to a question about like server stuff specifically on the most recent QA. Um there's a board for it. I can I can link it to you guys after you can whack it in the description if you want, but uh I don't know, Kieran's been here forever, understands server stuff way better than me, so I'd yep. rather not just, like, waffle about servers if I don't know. <laughs> I know kind of what I'm talking about, but, yeah, he's a he's a G, he can explain it better than me. But that is a priority at the moment, I think, like, sorting out servers. Maybe it's been said before, but it is, so... Had That's to throw good, yeah. it out there, just because, you know, well, be like so, that. so successful, and then you I just work as a community time. manager, I read it every day, you're fine, like... <laughs> <laughs> Now, we've been delving very deep into PVM, and it's incredibly interesting. But I do gotta ask, are you good. a PKer, my goblin? Do you slap it? Uh, I feel like I, I wouldn't call myself one. Like, I dabble. Um, Have you I'm murdered? Not like, I'm not, like, great. Have I? In, in, in <laughs> Gilanoi, yes. Um. <laughs> so you are. I don't, hey, I've, one, got, one I've, got, I've got like a handful. I don't know. I've probably got like a few thousand kills in like PvP overall. Few thousand, bro. That like, is like two or three k. Yeah, 
Castle Wars stuff or or like no, no like I've never really, Wars, I never really got bro. massively into Castle Wars. Like when I was when I was a kid, I used to you know the the thing that I'm pretty sure is like bannable now. You just grief people by like blowing up your own team and stuff. Like as a kid, <laughs> I would do that. Like ten year old me, <laughs> like I'd love that shit. It was the funniest stuff ever. But in terms of I don't know, like I dabble. I've got like I've got like a pure. I've got like a mid level. I have like a zerk that's abandoned because why would you play a zerk right now? Yeah. You just get your teeth kicked in by meds, so there's like not really any so point. So you feel the pain that there's no bounty hunter or like combat brackets really fight like, other than PvP worlds. You feel the pain since you have multiple. Especially accounts. especially having like a fifty attack pure, like yeah. I mean like bounty hunter for me was like my gateway into PvP anyway. Mm -hmm. It was kinda like low stakes, you still got like some decent reward and back? like building like a baby <laughs> pure for bounty hunter was like yeah. is really quick to do. It's like a really easy account to put together, right? Like a baby pure to just like get going in BH. Um, I'd like to see it come back because I think, especially if we, you know, if we we talk about like the worldy boss rework and maybe we talk about like aspects of the wilderness expansion that we spoke about at Game Jam and stuff. Um, for me, like Bounty Hunter feels important, at least anecdotally. I don't have data to back this up, so like I could be like way wrong. But like anecdotally, Bounty Hunter feels like important as like a pipeline to bring in like new blood to actually like help sustain. Because like even if we do like make the wilderness pog off again, like not every player who used to PK is gonna come back. Like we need new you need incentives for people to like get into PvP. Mm. And I think like the approach to the game for the longest time. Unless unless you're like just interested in it, there's not really much of a reason to engage yeah. with it, right? Which is maybe part of the reason for some of the tension between the groups as well is that like for a lot of people it feels like an interaction they're like forced to have not one that they're incentivized to learn anything about so i think like bh is like a pipeline to actually like get like a new generation of people on board so that those updates maybe do like a little bit better like there's more people that they are for um it's like i don't know it's, i'd like to see it come back i don't know if it will i wish i hope that it does uh I liked it a lot. I think like most of my friends who like do PvP would say that BH or like multi clanning was probably like their entry to PvP because I think they're both kind of like the lower <clears throat> tiers, right? Like getting into multi like at a base level is like pretty chill. So yeah. like outside of BH, when like multi reps was a thing, I just put up with like the boys and girls. We'd get like six or like ten of us and just like run through the rev caves for a little bit and then bounce with with whatever spoils we'd looted, and it was just fun, right? You just like mess about. Multi revs to me was like the first raids for PvP. You just get a bunch of people, you hmm. go out, and and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And there's yeah. nothing really that replaced that once it was gone. So you just have hmm. all these groups of people on like a Friday or Saturday night. Like I want to do something, but there's nothing really to do. Uh, but I, it's interesting you have multiple accounts. What was your favorite account to PK on, and were you a deep worldy bandit, or did you just slap it up at edge? Or PvP? Um, I don't know in terms of my favorite, really. Like, um, I did a lot of, like, edge, well, like, edge style at like BH stuff on my, like, 50 attack ages ago, and, like, a bit of PvP world stuff, but, um, I think I kind of moved into... I don't like when we say deeps, I've not really done much of like 44s or like GDZ or like Mage Bank or anything like that. But, um, can maybe like multi revs or just going out with the boys and like, not yeah, like multi revs up. on like multi revs on like a like a med level. I had yeah. like a lot of fun with, and even now, like, I'll play on like a a med level, like maybe I think it's like 102. Um, is it 102? Yeah, I think it is 102. Um, that I'll like float around rev caves and stuff. And sometimes on my pure, I'll run through like the Wildy Slayer caves because there's a lot of people, because uh, of like the nature of Wildy Slayer, there will be like a lot of low level people who are like scold with crawls or scold with chain mace doing like Slayer tasks. And because it's multi, I think a lot of what? people don't run through there. You don't really get I've hit by never, teams very often. I've never seen that, bro. You must be <laughs> PK more than I do. I've never nah, seen Nah, dude, Crosbo it's, it's because RNG. you're at the rev well, caves. Like, scold chain mace is it, like. That's what it like, is. Wildy I Slayer made... caves is good. I've made four videos on the Wilderness Slayer Caves, dude, and I just got to bring it up because you seem like you know about these Wilderness Slayer Caves. So in your opinion... Not much. <laughs> well, you've been there, right? You've attacked people there. Yeah. How would you describe the experience for a PKer attacking people with those long ridges and, you know, people see you coming when you're trying to attack them? I think, yeah, I think that's a little bit of the thing. It's kind of designed quite neatly, I guess, for people actually doing Slayer. Um in terms of 
you see people coming from like quite far away. Yeah, um, there's like a lot of like terrain. AFK. Like it's pretty easy to gap people. Obviously, on the flip side, like it it is in multi. I don't think there's generally much of an incentive for like teams to run through there, though. It's not like Rev Caves where. If you're talking about like a food chain, like that, like producer layer, like grass or whatever, like revs just spit out so much GP that that was like a really healthy bottom layer of a food chain. I don't think Wildy Slayer like works like that really for a lot of people. I think but, what um, what could tie in really well to this conversation is something that you've worked on, which is the um the wilderness boss reworks with the caves. Yeah, right. There might be like a bit of a spiritual success to multi revs, but just on the Wildy Slayer caves quickly. I think the terrain makes it difficult. I think there's like obviously there's like tricks of the trade, right? Like you get like projectile animations if people are like using crawls, or you'll be able to see that like none of the like dust devils are kind of like by the entrance, and you can just presume that somebody's probably got them stacked and barraging. Maybe you'll see like a cannonball animation or something like that. It's like I don't know. Like that's I feel like how you get most of them. Like you'll probably clock somebody. Um, you'll hit. You'll just hop like close to under them. Like if you get lucky. Um, obviously everything in there's well not everything, but like if you see somebody doing like Anku or Black Demons, then hopping is an absolute nightmare, but not impossible. Um <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's not the easiest place to PK, but it's kind no. of fun. And like a lot it's... of people are have like friends on speed dial and it's fun to just like tank like three or four people, you know? Like, it makes like tank incredibly... tests when you could tank yeah. is like fun as opposed to tanking like twenty people, it's like, well I guess I'll fucking die. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it makes me very happy though that you have the knowledge that um about this cave and about like the areas that are hard to pk in and then like if you see a cannon or attacking from far away like if the viewers didn't know you could see bolt and arrows render in before people so you can hunt people out like not a lot yeah. of people know that it's a wilderness trick right and you do which is incredibly awesome and honestly That's i, I the... like that you know that yeah it's one of the things with the wilderness that i think is also part of the problem with it for a lot of people though it's like you say, it's one of those things that not a lot of people know. I think so much of like existing in the wilderness in 2022 is like what's like esoteric knowledge, like known to like a select few mm -hmm. or like not immediately obvious. So like the wilderness has like a whole bunch of things like singles plus in the rev caves and then singles and then multi, but there's no real like delineation like visually as to what singles and what's multi. It's not really like explained what singles plus is unless you like know what it is from like the wiki, etc. Um, you know, some jewelry being able to teleport you up until 20, some being able to teleport you up until 30, um, teleblocks affecting like some non teleport teleports, but then not affecting something like teleport into the abyss, etc. Uh, interactions at like the singles and multi line, the way that like NPCs interact with a PJ timer, uh, or did in the past, etc. There's so much stuff in the wilderness that you, you have to just learn the hard way. It's like, I think one of the difficult parts about the wilderness for a lot of people, and one of the things that like, makes the wilderness so enjoyable for people that know it is you feel like you know you spent so much time in this like part of the game you know all this cool stuff and like that gives you like an edge right yeah but i think that's one of the things that i think makes it difficult to access for a lot of people is that it feels like an insurmountable gap trying to learn it versus people who in some cases have been pking for over a decade literally um it's like one of the difficult things trying to catch these people too especially in that cave i mean there is um Sorry, my doorbell rang. So whenever you get a superior, it shows you get a superior in the chat, but I swear to God, I pk there for a couple hundred hours. I've seen it once. I run on over. The dude's gone because it's been like two minutes. So even when it shows you someone's in the cave in that in the area, you still have such a hard time getting to them. And uh, yeah, that, that does kind of bring... It's a really big gap for people who are trying to get into PKing. Might as well just go to Rev Caves. Tell you block someone in black dehyde, and it's going to be more money per hour anyways. So maybe we do need more of that mid-level content in the wilderness, like you were saying, just like we need more mid-level content in Gilinor in general. Because it seems people are craving it. I people mean, want to learn. do Jagex have any plans to, like, breach that gap between the completely, you know, knowledged in the wilderness versus somebody that's brand new at it and doesn't know like what you mentioned about the uh zamorok mage that can teleport you in your tb like that that's something that you will never know until you find out the hard way <laughs> do you know what i mean but like by the way mod goblin i know that you're on a bit of a time restraint so if you have you know you have to no, pop, it's, no, it's fine it's fine it's fine i'm just i'm just letting her know that yeah, this we we're going to be another two be hours. I know this will probably be <laughs> no, our no, 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 you're, you're good. You're good to keep going. I'm sorry if it looks super weird, like I was ignoring. No, no, not at all. I I just know we've rolled over the hour mark. That's all. But um, yeah. Cool. yeah, I mean, 
I, I think something that we should touch on that I'm really, really excited to talk about mm-hmm. is um yeah, the uh sorry, the expansion, the change, what your guys are doing with the uh the wilderness bosses, Venonatus, Vetion, and uh Callisto. So mm-hmm. first things first, we we've covered the entire thing in a previous podcast. I don't know if you watched that episode. I'm gonna Yeah, I did watch it. Oh, you beast. Okay. You so beast. <laughs> you beast. Uh, I'm just curious. I think it was about 40 minutes of Mint Mad Cow talking about how much he loved me. I don't know who this man is. Pretty much. Um, That's exactly all I've done. It didn't stop after the podcast either, man. Rest no. assured. Like, God. I got a tattoo after, so. I just wrote a blog, bro. <laughs> like, dude, when you are hungry and thirsty in the desert and you see an oasis, you got to kind of go crazy. I'm, I'm You're sorry. hallucinating, bro. Yeah. I'm sorry. When they take away, you know, it's like a country song. They took away my. Uh, bounty hunter they took away my rev caves dude now i just got my car my pickup truck where am i gonna go you know what i'm saying all right go for it so i'm just like i really really liked the um the blog post that was put up i i think a lot of thought went into it i think it had a different take to what we've seen for other pvp updates um and that's just my opinion so i'm just curious uh how, how do you think that it went down because i don't really check reddit and I don't spend too much time on Twitter, so I'm just curious, like, how did the rest of the community react to that post? Um, it went down so much better than I think we were expecting it would. I think generally, like, ba- based on, like, experience, even just, like, as, like, an observer before I started working here, it feels like any time you talk about PvP, if, like, one group is happy, the other isn't. Yeah. And I think, by and large, that, like, wasn't quite the case. I think people had concerns about, um... What happened with multi revs and like all of the like RWT etc. The racketeering, um, I am I'm not sure that I have like a fully formed opinion on kind of like protection or like holding walls down. On, on like the one hand, I think it's kind of cool that it's like an interaction you'd only really get in like an MMO. On the other hand, you know the like motivation to like real or trade for it is like a bit meh. Um, yeah, and I'd hope. I mean, even in the design, I think we were aware. Um, and try to make it a little bit harder to lock worlds down. Even though, like, with multi-revs, I think people's memory of it is maybe not entirely accurate. Like, I don't think there were many worlds that were, like, hard locked down. It was, like, a fraction no, there that were, and then, yep. like, response times were still, like, pretty bad. But I'd say, like, probably, like, more than half the worlds were just, like, pretty untouched. Yeah, like, yeah. It would take clans, like, five, ten minutes to respond, if that. Regardless, though, um, aside from those concerns, which I think are kind of, like, wholly justified, I think it went down really well. I think... Um, we tried to consider, even though it's like a wilderness update or like a PvP update, we tried to kind of consider angles that might usually not have really been considered. So like, um, the idea of adding lower risk singles equivalents with roughly like the same time to complete as now for like the collection log and stuff. Um, so that, you know, if you're like just interested in getting like the pet or the rings, like stuff that you would have been able to get before the rework. Um, you should still be able to do it. And those should probably be like a bit more intuitive than now, because I don't really think many of those bosses are worth killing without like a crawls these days anyway, even with like all of the goofy safe spot stuff. Um, yeah, I, I mean, also the play. fact that you got a safe spot, all of them is just stupid <laughs> in general. You know, you can't fight them like yeah. properly, really, or use yeah, like all definitely, your food, you know? Yeah, uh, they're definitely like a product of their time, right? It's why like when yeah. I was writing the blog post, I tried to kind of like, make it clear i think why we feel like they're in need of a rework is that back in 2014 it was a case of uh in the blog they were like you're gonna have to bring your friends to take them down and it's like actually they'll hit you and all your friends they don't care about your prayer they're gonna slap you for 60s they don't drop any supplies oh you didn't get a kill unlucky um they just didn't really i don't think they were really like filling that purpose which is why players came up with like such creative ways to actually make them like feasible to kill right yeah, and um, bug them out. I don't think we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, well, literally. Yeah. And I just, I think we wanted to make sure that we didn't. We wanted to make sure that players didn't feel like completely shafted by like us reworking and putting them into multi, Man. and that like they wouldn't be losing stuff that they had already. The... Obviously, the D pick is like another thing. But is, I, mate, the moment the moment that it. you put into that blog post that you'll be able to get the D pick from somewhere outside of the wilderness, I. I don't understand where people can really have a problem with that, considering the rings are super niche, and, like, they don't really have too many uses outside, or anywhere, for that matter. 
Um, sorry, I'm a little bit passionate about that because as soon as I saw it on the KQ drop table, which is what you guys um, had suggested, do you have any feedback on that? Are people happy? Like, Iron, I, I'm assuming it's Iron Man mostly because a dragon pickaxe is, you know, it's pretty linear to their progression in the game. So taking that out of the wilderness and just removing that that wall entirely, are people happy with that as a potential thing? Um, yeah, I mean, we attached the survey as well, right? And I think the results on that were pretty clear that especially people who like didn't call themselves PKs were like really gassed about it. Um, I'll say that like speaking personally, I would rather get my head kicked in by a clan of 50 people repeatedly for hours on end than go chase a 1 in 400 drop from the Cal Fight Queen. Yep. Uh, yeah, same. Yeah. She just hits so, so hard, but like, <laughs> I think there is that alternative. Players are pretty in favor of a skilling alternative, and I think we've been like a little bit quiet on the Wildy Boss rework front, um, because TOA has been like a heavy focus. Yeah. So like, the blog initially wasn't meant to come out until like the thirty first of August, but I wanted to kind of get it out a bit sooner so that I wasn't juggling it alongside TOA stuff. Um, so it's been on like a back burner for a little bit, but at least it was out there. People have been talking about it, you know. Um, but I think the reception to the D-Pick stuff was, like, pretty good. The Wilderness Rings are, like, an interesting one. Like, um, I don't know. I think, like, if the other uniques, for example, hold, like, good value and, like, the incentives for the boss is good anyway, if they're, like, a deal breaker for people, um, personally wouldn't be opposed to considering moving them, like, really. Um, it's not a hell that I'd, like, die on either way, because I think they are pretty niche, right? Like, um, what is it, the... Is it the Tyrannical Ring that gives Crush Bonus? That's yeah. like a bit of a time save on like a Corp grind. Um, I think Ring of the Gods is kind of slept on, to be fair. I think that's actually kind of OP. Like, uh, especially if you're like learning Inferno and stuff like that, Ring of the Gods is kind of slept on, but that's maybe like the only place. It's good for like skilling content and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the D pick especially, I just, it's felt like a real source of tension for like a long time. <laughs> And maybe like justifiably so, because I think for a lot of people they feel like it's a really consequential mid game upgrade. Yeah. I think if you like really crunch numbers, if you go like on rate for the D pick at Callisto using a DPS alt and then go from sixty one to ninety nine mining, you don't actually save that much time getting a D pick. But if you want one, and I mean now it's good at TOA, it's good in chambers. You know, it felt like something that we kind of had to do, and it's probably maybe a little bit overdue. Um, and just amp up the incentive otherwise, right, to compensate for what is likely a little drop in value although it's gone up a bit because of toa so do, do you, <laughs> you can get one from kbd right yeah yeah it's, yeah, one, in, thousand, yeah. it's one in yeah. 1500 right it's now i think it's going yes. down to one in a thousand okay hmm, yeah. i think after the after the like main rework we have like time where we'd like to do like qual and i think maybe like taking a look at like tables on other bosses that don't necessarily need like a full rework would be kind of cool like scorpia just sucks like that stuff's in like, <laughs> like that's like fifty. It, well, it's not like bad content, right? But it's like fifty-five wildy. It's, it's multi, the most and you lose money killing it. Like boss yeah. uh, ever made, and there is zero reward pretty much, except for the pit. Right? Yeah, that's no, I think safe. the boss is cool. It's just the case of like yeah. I think if we get time to look at like rebalancing tables beyond like the main rework, that would be something cool to talk about. Like Chaos Ellie as well is another like really high risk boss that's just. Yeah, Sally is um, absolute garbage, but it is the OG box. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's where I got it's where I got my D pick. To be fair, I got like a T bow at like twenty one KC on my iron, so just full scent at Chaos Sally. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Because it shreds awesome. there, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, you know, you're like four iteming. This was like before skull protection, but like post skull protection, like there's no reason to yeah. just don't click people. But that's again though, that's like esoteric knowledge, right? Like you kind of you know what a skull trick looks like, you know, like what to do. But if you're like new, that's never really explained to you, and a lot of people just learn the hard way, right? Yeah, it's like something we could probably do a bit better something, on, which we have done, I guess. But something people learn the hard way on is also macing. And a lot of my mm -hmm. viewers, because I told them we're gonna have you on, they're like, get his opinion on macing. What does, he, what does he think about that? You know, here's a stat that I got from a clan, I can't remember which one. First weekend of revs, this one clan made seven bill in three days, just one clan. Um, so I think nowadays you can do it with the Zarite bow. That's like almost a hundred percent success rate, but obviously you'd have to have yeah, a team with sapphire for... bolts and the specs. Yeah. So yeah. on the flip side, it... like you have yeah. a clan of people risking like a four hundred mil crossbow, but but yeah, uh, it, it's like is that meant to be part of the wild to kind of balance out the risk of multi? I okay. Or so... you know, yeah, go for it. 
on me on like macing and stuff like that i'm not like as a player i'm not like personally a fan um at the same time at like this point in time i don't really think i don't think the amount of like sources that i'm using to like form that opinion is like balanced enough like Maybe, maybe clans realize that there are like ways for other clans to like get around it, etc. And maybe again, it's a part of like if you don't skull up in like multi, then you're like probably not risking that much, even if you do get maced, right? But, um, I don't know. As a player, I'm not personally a fan in terms of having like a more well rounded opinion. It's not really something that I think I'm drawing from enough places on. So it's just like I don't really have an answer there that I think has value, if that makes sense. For for sure, and in my opinion, like I enjoy the idea that people can get smited and multi a little faster, but not instantly with no recourse. You know what I mean? Like if you have a clan of people with Ceradom and Strike and Light Staffs and D Spears, fair enough. But if you just one tick somebody for their full prayer and they lose a plus one, that almost feels to me like they're kind of taking out a little bit of the variety of multi. You know, you're not going to see those dragon claws or Karasi swords when they come out at the new Wilderness Slayer as much as you would if they give them a little more of a chance to keep their prayers up. So for me, as a multi PKer, I just kind of like to see that variety. If you don't, you just kind of see AGSs or maybe Staffs of the Dead and a lot of Zerican robes. I mean, yeah, it, it just I falls am. into being overpowered, really. I, the way I see that is if there is no counterplay to something then that something that's doing it is overpowered, right? So if it is a guaranteed you will lose your plus one if this happens, then I would say it's not really balanced well. But is that the case? And you can tell me this, Mint. So, like, say, for example, you know, 50 members of a team come in, they've got maces, they've got Zarek crossbows. If you get your HP down to one and you're at 99 prayer with protect item, will that guarantee the smite with all of those people attacking you, or is it pretty safe I've to say you'll keep it? i heard that, yes, but I, I honestly, I haven't lived through that. I was like at okay. 50 HP and I still got maced, or smited by Zarai Buzz, but I heard that, yeah, you at, at incredibly low HP, it still works 100% of the time, but I've also heard okay. a couple cases of people taking it, like a couple. I think so that should be chat, tested. If you've tanked it, hmm. let us know. Because I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd say keep keep track of that stuff when it comes out. You know, just observe like mm -hmm. what the smiting situation is like after these bosses do come out. I mean, out. yeah, yeah. I, 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 this, crazy. This, this is the thing. Like, let's get like you gotta understand. There is a an entire community in our game that have not got anything really to do right now, and that is the multi PvP scene. Okay, now I'm personally have always been a single PKer. But I can appreciate that there is a, a wide community of people that are missing the thing that they enjoy about the game. It's like, let's give them something that they enjoy, and then, you know, we can fill in the holes afterwards, right? It's like, if, if we need to address, you know, people getting maced, which I think we do, um, and if it is an ongoing issue, hopefully Jagex do something about it. But but for now, it's like, let's get the ball rolling, you know? It, it, it's yeah. like, I, I, I really do sympathize with... Um, the people that love Morty, because at the moment, the only place I can really think of where people have an incentive to be is the Chaos, or not the Chaos, sorry. Or yeah, the Chaos Altar, sorry. Up at 44 is where you get, like, there's bonus prayer. No... There's no incentive to there, be yeah, there, bro. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm okay, so well, then I don't, I don't see one, then. Glad, yeah, I yeah. don't. I don't even multi PK really. Like I've never been part of a clan or anything like that. But like everybody's suiciding at the altar. There's barely anyone risking, right? Like, yeah, no, I would never. The, the odds of you like finding like a the odds of you finding somebody actually like risking like noted bones is like pretty low. I don't really know yeah. why the altar is multi. To be fair, it feels like a bit unusual. But I don't even again, know that's a, that's another one of these like esoteric the things, thing is, right? It's it's fine yeah. because like even if you suicide, the XP rays are stupid. It's so good. Yeah, you know? I think, yeah. So. I mean, people maybe feel like one way or the other about the altar. I think, yeah. like, the fact that it is worthwhile even if you die. Exactly. So, is, like, so kind of like what worldly content should be by and large. That it's like, yeah. I, maybe the chaos thought was a bit too good. I'm it's, still better at keeping hour good, if you yeah. use runners. What if like we relocated it for, in the middle yeah, of the boss good. layer? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There's, nah, a rope, there's a rope there. That's where you get out. Can't do that. Oh yeah. my god. But you gotta go in, pay your money, and then you gotta go all uh, the no, way to the like, middle. You know what I mean? I'll tell you, at least for Iron Man, you know, that, that ultra single-handedly 
like cut off half the time that you need to grind yeah. for pretty much yeah so, yeah i think that's it's the thing that for iron it's like really good. good i it's mean it's cheap good. as well right but yeah for main accounts too it's like you save quite a lot of money even if you did one inventory at a time but yeah, well, actually maybe it's too good but yeah, it feels yeah. like one of those kind of like pieces of wilderness skilling content that's like maybe in like the right area and they totally maybe just didn't like think about it one way or the other but yeah they didn't think about the consequences honestly when they put it out <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was just so random. It was such like a small random update that happened. And then like people are like, whoa, this saves half the bones. Like, what? Okay. You know, I mean, <laughs> like it's so crazy. Big experience. Yeah. Um, speaking yep. of the wilderness layer, uh wh what are your thoughts about that, just as a PK or coming into the game? And maybe what are your thoughts about the uh upgraded items? I remember you coming to my chat and I was saying that the new scepter it's kind of like a trident, and you said, nah, it's more like a polypore staff. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'm polypore. buying like 50 more <laughs> after you said that, because that sounds amazing. Um, Oh, my God, polypore. <laughs> yeah, in terms of my opinion on the lair, I don't really... I don't know that I really have one. I think like the idea of having this like place where you have to like pay a fee, or where you can't easily hop once you're inside, and where you have to actually like tank to be able to get out, is something you can only really do with like a cave system, and I think that's also like one of the things that like you can you kind of like prevent like scout bots hopping and stuff a little bit on the inside at least. Um, I think like some of the measures that you have to take to then like prevent maybe some of the to prevent make it really easy to lock down can only really happen because they're in layers etc. Um, on the flip side, I also kind of get where people are coming from when they talk about like wanting more stuff on the overworld. Um, which is something that I'd kind of like to fill in the gaps with if we ever get the time with like maybe some of the bits from the like wilderness expansion from Game Jam. Um, it was like one of the first things that I got to like work on a little bit. Um, in terms of like the rewards, especially none of none of the ideas, like barely any of the ideas were like mine, quote unquote. And I, I don't think there are many ideas that I'd be comfortable like saying were well, like my ideas anyway, just because like everything's kind of a collaborative effort. But a lot of the design. Um, it came from like a it came from like a another dev. Um, I won't I won't name them in case they'd rather remain nameless. But um, mod nameless. The, yeah, mod <laughs> nameless. Yeah, I think the the rules in general. I think they're kind of cool, right? I think PK seem interested about being able to experiment with them, but given that they're kind of like thematically upgrades to wilderness weapons, um, and they're like they're wildy pieces of content, right? They're not necessarily like PvP pieces of content. It's not like you know like Morrigans or like corrupt stuff from back in the day. <laughs> Which would maybe be cooler coming from like something like Bounty Hunter, or maybe could have been cooler coming from the PvP arena. Um, I think they work quite nicely for like anti PKing as well. I'm not sure if that's like what was being gone for at the time, but like, you know, something that maybe like stops people from running, something that yeah, um, it's the like, anti PK level as well. So it's the anti PK that... weapon. I, I really, I think yeah. that they're quite well thought out actually. Like the special effects they have. Um, when I read all of I the think special we said abilities, we're going to change the chain mace a little bit. I think that was like kind of probably the worst received out of all the specials. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with it. I think they're due to have like a beta at some point, and depending on when this goes out, that might have already happened. But um... I mean, to to touch on the overall update, by the way, something I really liked is like reading what the boss's attacks are going to be and how it utilizes the room. Okay, now mm -hmm. I, you know, I I will say this. One thing that Jagex have been really good at is creating bosses and environments for those bosses to be able to do their thing. And I think a prime example of that is the Warden on the final phase right now, where it's like mm. you have the entire environment moving, you have to move accordingly. Now, I don't know if this is the case, I really hope it is, but I, I really hope that inside of the environments where all of the new bosses are going to be moved, I hope that it's deadly. Like, if you blindly go in there, and you're going in there with your tribal mask on and your Exertian robes, like, you're gonna get wrecked if you don't understand, like, the base mechanics of how that room functions, right? Because I remember, I, 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 yeah. I was just gonna say, I read that, I think Vetion has, like, lightning in the room and stuff like that. So, is, is that something which could potentially happen, or is that happening for those bosses? I think with the like one of the things that you get to do when you put bosses in like a lair rather than the overworld is that you can like hard control for things like safe spotting, right? You can by and large hard control for like mechanics being really abusable. Um in the same way that they kind of are on like the overground, right? So like if Vetion is just in a big rectangle, it's like, well, 
you know, the environment's not going to do any favors for you, and you kind of just need to know what's up. But yeah. um, I don't. I mean, Veteon already has like a little like weird lightning splash attack thing, right? I, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll probably look a little bit more like the Warden's P3 engage light or enraged lightning, that kind of thing. More error spread. Right? That would be really yeah. cool. I I would yeah, like. I don't that. know exactly what it's going to look like, but um, yeah, I am. At, it's the kind of thing where um. Understanding the bosses is definitely a benefit, right? And um, even if you maybe aren't like the best, if you're like in with a group of people who maybe aren't like the best at like multi PvP, maybe you're just like understanding of the boss and like what it's going to do when maybe like gives you an edge over somebody else who maybe comes in to try to like move you off the boss, etc. I don't know. Yeah. And there will be like a bunch of tuning um, with that kind of side of things, but I think mechanically they sound pretty interesting. I think we wanted to give people like a sense of what they'd look like, like the essence of each boss without explaining every single bit of like minutia. Um, yeah, I don't know. They seem cool. I think um, Callisto is probably the one that I'm most interested in, that he actually like functions like a bear and just like runs at you and mauls you, as opposed to like shouts at you a little bit or gets stuck on a rock and just looks at you until he dies. Like, Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. A about the bosses, actually, uh, something that I mentioned in that podcast was seeing the new layers and seeing where these bosses are going to be the layers look fantastic and for me i think the Art boss team nuts, man, honestly yeah i i feel like the old models of the uh the monsters look a bit underwhelming in the new environments that's just my opinion on it i was just wondering if the uh the bosses will be getting a, a visual rework or are they planning to leave them as they are I mean, so Vetion definitely is um, on account of. I yeah. mean, we shared like the remodel as like a GIF in the blog, right? We didn't share any of the new animations or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I think Venonatus and Callisto don't feel like crazy out of line in like the same way because like Vetion's model is literally like one of the what is it like one of the paladins from the Legends quest basically, but then scaled up to a three by three, I think. Yeah. So it just like looks really goofy, like loads of parts of him like clip through each other, etc. Um. I don't know. I, I think the opinion of, like, the art team, and it, maybe it could change, but, like, art are always just so busy. Like, we need more artists. If you if you know what you're doing with art, please apply for a job at Jagex, I beg. Um, <laughs> but I don't think Callisto and Venonatis feel as egregiously out... Egregious is maybe too strong a word, but they don't feel as out of line as Vetion does, right? Like, Seracnus is still new-ish and doesn't look like much like, whoa, look how modern this looks compared to like Venonatis, right? Yeah. Callisto is still like a big bear. Maybe they'll get some stuff done, like, I don't know, maybe if um, I'm sure they'll new change animations and yeah. parts of the model are like difficult to rig, maybe some stuff will change, but yeah, I think Vetion is probably the most... Because even though we're reworking the bosses, I think like we're apprehensive to change the way they look, which is the same reason why like retaining the option to metamorph the Vetion pet into the old or new model. Um, yeah, I don't I, know, maybe it'll change. But I, I, I don't think there are any plans really. I don't know what it is. Um, well, I do. When I was reading the abilities for uh, Callisto the bear, it, I was reading it and I was thinking, oh my god! The first thing that popped to my head, I, I don't know. I'm sure you do because you've been in the gaming industry. It made me think of Volley Bear from League of Legends. Yeah. yeah. Like when I it when it like season two. when it like leaps with its all, I was like, oh my god, imagine if Callista was like that and you walk in mm. and it just fucks you up. Like that would be insane. <laughs> you know? I'm so, gonna bring a ZGS and a dragon sphere and see what happens. Just I just I don't know. I, I, I would like the um <laughs> I'd like the abilities and stuff to align visually, I guess. And you know, like I said, it's just a personal opinion of mine. Um I think you could do a lot of that with animations rather than models, though, right? Like one of the kind of cre one of the things that makes TOA so crazy is that um, I think my understanding is that beforehand a lot of animation was done on like proprietary tech, and for TOA we started using something which is a little bit more of like a an industry standard. And then you look yeah. at like the animation for like Kefri's dung, or like the the dying animations of Wardens, and you're like, damn. And like even it's with the same model, I think different. the way that you like animate that model. Um, can completely like recontextualize the way that it feels, even if like a post it looks the exact same. So okay, I don't All right, know if they need like a full rework, and I'll be interested mm, yeah. to see what they look like when they're actually like rigged and animated. If they do anything different, that's really insightful. Actually, I I don't know anything about that stuff. So to hear that's the case, and like seeing firsthand what the warden's like, like oh my goodness, um, it's insane, isn't it? Like the it's mad. Team, I don't know. Everybody involved on that just went nuts. It, it, do, you, do you know what? P3 is visually just so gorgeous. Yeah. Like, Bro, I, I was killing the warden the other day, and I was we were on expert mode, and I was just like going side to side, doing the thing. And I was just sat there, and I was like, 
it is so cool being in here right now. And I was like, imagine going and killing Bandos right now. And comparing yeah, that to... to and it's just like... I, I, but it makes me excited because I'm like, okay, they've raised the bar to this level. That surely means that things that follow are going to have to like almost hit that bar, if not succeed that bar. So I'm not going to lie, man. TOA has given me so much just life and just... I feel very optimistic for the game's future. I pray that you guys continue doing what you're doing. And like, if you can make stuff that's even similar to TOA, which I'm sure you guys will, cause you've hit that now, like there's good things to come. I hope, I hope that's the case. Um, yeah, I think that's the crazy thing with TOA. It's just hearing from so many people, like even like streamers, right? Cause like a lot of spoiler alert for people that don't know, like a lot of content creators don't play much off stream. Um, because it's their full-time job. Um, like, but, the amount of like my friends who like create content who were saying that they're just like properly addicted, like they like, end stream and they're still just playing TOA like constantly. Like they make content and they're still just like playing it over and over and over again. It's like so sick to hear. Like I don't know, TOA is just I don't... the bar is so high all of a sudden. It's kind of like scary to have to like live up to with like future bits of content, right? Like But the fact that you've even managed to hit that high, that's a good mm. thing. Right? Because yeah, no for sure. It, it's like going forward. It, it can either hit that again, or it can go higher, I'd assume. And, and like you said, right, they're using... Um, they're, so I did hear a rumor that they're using, is it C++ or a, a client along those lines? And that's how they were able to change like the visual effects for like the dung, like you mentioned, and the Warden's death animation. Do you, do you know much about that? It's, it's more just like tooling. It's called Maya. It's like an industry. It's used by like a lot of people for animation and like 3D modeling stuff. Okay, and that's something I that... Think, I don't think it's gotten much usage in the past, but I think now... Right. It's changing a whole bunch of... Like, there's a lot of stuff that we can do with it, including, like, a lot of ways that we can support, like, content creation with it that I won't go into detail about, but... I don't know. There's a lot that we can do with, like, the lessons that we learned, even on, like, a tooling front, I think, from TOA, that kind yeah. of make the future a little bit exciting. I mean, if they wanted to just quickly go and make it so when Bandos slams the ground with a range attack, like, the ground kind of, like, lifts up around him, that'd be cool. Just just, to, just for an hour there. Maybe. Re revisiting old reason. stuff like that is, like, uh, I'm yeah, not sure how likely that is. Sketchy. But... It's sketchy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it, it just, I, my brain is going wild right now because I'm like, there's so many, so many possibilities. But yeah. Um, yeah. Shall we talk about Yes. Karasi, since we're getting yeah. about the end, and then of I have one last question year. for for him after. All right, let's do it. Yep. My goblin, tell us about the Karasi. What else can I say? Tell us about that Karasi, dude. I I I joined and was told that it was like attached to something like um the vol. Wait, it was the vol always uh, the Void Waker, not like the oh, okay. spiritual successor to the Karasi, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. It was really like funny to like talk about PvP and have to read people just like say like add Karasi, add Karasi, add Karasi, and I'm like we kind of are, um, but we can't talk about why or like when. But I think like it feels like it makes a lot of sense with like the the other weapons like really being, um, you know, kind of geared towards like anti PKing etc. The bringing back like this one for like so many PKers, like the Karasi is just such a hugely like nostalgic piece of content, right? At the same time, I don't think it would have tracked well if it were just like you could buy it back for two hundred k. Yeah, I hate uh, it as like a quest reward. And I think, I think if you calc it, because it does like between fifty and one hundred and fifty percent if you max it. I think it maxes like a. 75 or something like that like it's worse than 60s for sure 60s and high maybe a 70. maybe maybe i'm way overestimating but it's it's, it's objective it's worse than an ags right but um i think well like in terms of like ko potential quote unquote but the fact that it does magic damage um it chucks a spanner in the works right it, it's it really I think does it's, it's an interesting spec weapon as well in that like it's quite easy to use so even though it's not aimed at anti pking like it kind of it doesn't do bad at it um, I think it's aimed exactly for anti PK, and no one's gonna ever expect a Karasi. I mean, maybe when it comes out, but the price yeah. wise, no one's I gonna think go. One of the yeah, yeah I think one of the reasons people might be scared of it is because it has like a really infamous reputation because of like the Ring of Vigor back in the day, meaning that you could just like double spec with it and you could just like absolutely blast somebody into the next dimension. But um, you know, I guess Lightbearer exists, but that generation. You know, you can still like get a couple of specs off, but there's like enough time for people to like really comfortably eat before that happens anyway. So, uh, so 
I actually don't have a problem, by the way, with if this passes and this is the way that uh, the Krassi is going to come back into the game. I have no problem at all with this being as powerful as like the AGS and having the same max hit because I, I feel like it's all about the amount of effort that needs to be put into something and obtaining it versus like its outcome. So the initial problem obviously was that back in pre OC, you did a quest, you paid like 200k to a void guy for some reason. I don't know what the quest line was 200k and you affected the void stairs back. It was the void yeah. quest yeah. line. And yeah. you effectively got a, a 200k AGS, and and it was inherently yeah. like overpowered in just that sense alone. So if you're gonna have to go through the steps of killing all three of the wilderness bosses, or at least buy in like the unique parts from all three, if, if this thing has the same hit as an AGS, I think that's fair. I mean, you're gonna have to be in max strength to be able to fully utilize its powers, anyways. So it's kind of like I don't see a problem with that. I think I, that'd I be hope fine. That the future of new special attack weapons isn't like always looked up to the AGS or compared to it and instead just kind of different kind of like the volatile staff you know when you brid a lot of people just can't melee cuz how else are you going to die a dark bow no no maybe very rarely now On the people one in will hide 400 of the depot hits then sure <laughs> oh, not the way i use it i guess but <laughs> now people will hide the volley in their envy with a staff of dead and they'll have an AGS on them, and they'll fakey it out, and then they'll volatile staff you. And even yeah. though it doesn't hit as high, it changes the meta in a way to where you can outplay your opponent. And I want to see more weapons like that, and the the Voidbringer is just up my alley. It's not stronger, it's just different, and still very usable. I think I, it, I like the way we're of, going with that. One of the other things as well, I guess, is that like um, with like some of the equipment rebalancing stuff, um, 75 attack builds didn't they lost like a little bit um, by way of, I think, was it Rapier that moved from 75 to 80? Or was Rapier always 80? No, nah, I think it was Cycle. Yeah, I think it's more Cycle. Yeah, okay. regardless. Um, yeah. I think we kind of like balanced it around being like half decent DPS as like a non degradable option for like tier 75 accounts. And like what that also means a little bit is that like if you're like a little bit less experienced, you can like save on a switch and it's not like the worst thing ever to just main hand it as a melee weapon either. Like, um, and then you still just have like a spec attached to it. Um, you know, I don't know. I think it's like maybe it'll be like really expensive and maybe it'll like, you know, hopefully it'll become like affordable so it's not like crazy expensive, maybe. Yeah. There's like a balance to be struck between like it's easy to use, it's accessible, but also like you want it to be kind of high value so the bosses have value. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I'm excited to to see how it it should be high value. Just just to add on to that real quick, uh, this is one of the main concerns I have is I know that you guys are planning to make these wieldy bosses on par with, as you describe, Hydra Vorkaf, which at the moment in max gear, you're looking at making about... I can make 5 mil an hour of Vorkaf pretty steadily, or 4.5 to 5 mil, right? Which is like an incentive in itself. I'm assuming that doesn't take into consideration these drops, but if, worst case scenario, let, let's let say the, the, uh, the Karassi or the Void Breaker, or sorry, I forgot what the name of it is, if that pass or it doesn't pass the polls what happens with this content is it doomed based upon the rewards not passing or is there still think, enough there for it to be good the, the same approach that's usually taken i think if something if something ever doesn't pass the poll it doesn't mean it's like dead and buried right it means like you know there's like more work to do um there's something we could do to like make it a bit more appealing and um we just you know, we we change things around. We like run it back and hopefully like land in a place where it's like good for a whole bunch of people and it's in a healthy position to pass. I don't think it's a case of yeah, you know, and like it fa- it fails and then the content is just like doomed. I don't think that's the case. I'll also say that like the the kind of like GP per hour thing, like because it's meant to be like a kind of neck style drop system, it might feel like a little bit lower if you're not consistently being like the MVP per se, but um, still worth like rolling out in a team and stuff like that, right? Okay. Which I think is another, like, one of those considerations that we made, kind of, for, like, irons especially, and stuff like that, is that you don't want it to be, like, a, you know, like, a grad or where it's just, like, oh, somebody else looked at the boss, nothing for you. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, we Hate don't really that. get that. So yeah, I, I like I like that loot system. And ju- just real quick, one last on that. So, has the, this idea for the Crassy Sword, has this overall gone down well with the community? What's the feedback like on it? 
Um, I think PvP is generally like overwhelmingly like they're just gassed, right? So we even see it like mentioned in old school because it's like yeah. super nostalgic. Even like the animation, right? Or just like the model for like Karasi and now talking about like the Void Waker um, is like really nostalgic for a lot of people. I think survey wise, it was probably like a little bit less well liked than the stuff that's like really obviously coded for or like really obviously geared towards anti PKing, but like not like egregiously so. Um, I think there are there are probably things that like I as like a CM could be doing to kind of communicate it so that people are kind of more aware of how it's actually likely to sit into the game as opposed to like people having this like crazy idea of what it is based on like oh back in the day you know if you had what somebody you ran into a guy in an alley with one of these you were dead twice bro like you know like <laughs> it's not it's not that mad like KO potential wise it's like worse than what's already yeah, yeah. Here. it's just like variety it's just like interesting so okay i think that's like one of the challenges with like the project is like maybe trying to like better help people understand that the reputation that it has isn't necessarily how it's gonna fit into the game mm -hmm. and um making sure people don't see it as this like crazy busted item because i really just don't think it is one maybe okay. i'm wrong but i don't think a lot of people do crazy fun wow that's <laughs> crazy busted yeah Right, Rice Cup, did you have a final question? Yeah, that you wanted yeah, to add on? yeah, last question, and we should probably wrap up after that. But, um, so, you know, the rev stuff, right? The rev changes, we used to talk about it a ton, and we used to kind of like, kind of like have our own ideas of what the solution could be to kind of like bring back some of that multi aspect. Because I, I don't know if you know, like, how the, the revs updates kind of like have progressed over the years, because, like, you know, it used to be just one small area of all revs multi, and then you know, that's where the lockdown happened. And then they completely just removed the whole multi aspect. But the, my question uh, was, why, why didn't they just split the area to multi and singles for reps? Rather than I, just like, oh, let's completely just make them all single, you know? Right? Yeah, I, so I don't know. Um, like, yeah. I wasn't there. I think like, obviously, the team was like way smaller, then you had like fewer voices as well. Yeah. I think like now it feels like we're more comfortable with like gradualism, I guess. So like I feel like nowadays if you're a multi revs, rather than just like nuking the content, you might have experimented with like doing a fee. Maybe you would have experimented with it like becoming singles lower down, etc. I think like maybe there would have been steps between like there is an issue here, delete the content. Um but like I can't speak for that back in the day. I just I feel like yeah. now it's different. how do you I see think it now? We're like a lot more willing to be like iterative. If that makes sense. Like I think we're more willing to spend time on something after it's come out to make sure it like sits where we'd like it to. Um, Would you guys then maybe revisit the idea of like having both style of revs? Because you know, I, I mean think we one put of it the in, biggest yeah. We put it in the Worldy expansion game jam, right? Mm -hmm. Did you like, guys? Um, I don't know if you guys mentioned splitting up the revs to have both styles. But we um, we just we just suggested like what if we did multi revs again, but added a big fee. Uh, yeah, I, like yeah, I, yeah. I, perfect, the landscape's honestly. a bit different, right? Like yeah. maybe the fee wouldn't be enough. Um, I don't know. Like, and like, like, it has gone a lot better, but and, yeah, and you couldn't switch worlds. <clears throat> kind of like the layers. I think you know. I think one of the because like you know I see it from a different perspective because like I had to like buy into the whole protection shenanigans um as an iron man because like literally if if you didn't you just had no shot at realistically getting any drops from there but like now the the fact that there is singles and no matter what that's gonna stay right but what if you if you guys brought in um the you know a multi version back with on top of this right i'm sh i think this the whole protection thing will no will nowhere uh, be near as prominent as it used to be because a lot of the buyers back then were Ironmans that were definitely, you know, they felt fairly forced to get, you know, to to get into that kind of, like, you know, system, right? So because, like, now you have singles, so, like, why would the Ironman really need to do that? Anyway, I guess right? so, one, one you know of, what so. yeah, one of my go-to questions, though, is, like, why did you feel forced in the first place? Was it, like, rev weapons well, specifically, or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, to get those weapons, you, you know, obviously you had to kill reps but the problem is if is you that like if, a completionist streak though or like what like... Uh, no i mean like just just like for completion right like yeah completionist yeah, okay. because it's end game right it's end game items. so so you weren't forced 
Yeah, yeah, I was. It, it's hard to explain, but like, it was yeah, just, no, I, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, if, if, like you were gonna progress more into the game, right? This, that's just something that eventually you'll you'll hit. But the problem is you can't really do it on an Iron Man because as long as you know, every world had somebody tagging stuff. So like, literally, all they had to do is tag it once, and you never got the drop. Or yeah, I think can't. that's like a tricky thing with Iron. I yeah. um, but like, uh, but like now you have singles, so that's not really a big issue anyway. Yeah, no, for sure. If you bring the multi back. There's really not much incentive for Iron Man to even care about, you know, wanting to even do that multi stuff because they have singles anyways. So yeah, I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's like a bit of a case study with the multi boss rework where you have like a yeah a, a multi version and then like a singles variant. And I want to make it clear as well that like I think a lot of people thought it sounded like private server or whatever that we just have like the same boss but in singles. Um, but it's obviously going to be like a little bit different to that. Like uh, maybe it's like a a cub of Callisto or like a one of like Venonatus's cool. like overgrown spiderlings. It's not just gonna be like here's Venonatus again, but this one sucks. Like compared to like <laughs> the other one in terms of like how strong they are, you know. It's, that's um, all that's awesome. It's that... a, maybe it's like a case study and then if it's if it's like provable that you can kind of have like really similar content exist healthily in like a multi and a single setting, then like maybe multi revs could make a return. I don't know. I can't confirm that on a podcast. We've yeah, never no, spoken I was about just, that. I was just thinking, like like I, it, it just felt weird that the solution they had was just literally just turn it singles and that was it you know like yeah it, it just you know what i mean it's not like a boss or anything right like these guys are just kind of slightly special mobs that there's no reason why i think they, that's part of the problem right is they're so yeah. easy to do like you could you could literally yeah. kill them with fire strike bro like, you know, it's like yeah yeah it's just like there was definitely an appeal to the whole multi thing i remember you know mint used to do all kinds of multi content there my full time and, bro. And it's, they it took is, my job bro it is unfortunate that like that just completely disappeared just because people abused it for real world trade and there were definitely easy options to circumvent or took a, take away a lot of the incentive to you know racketeer you know so yeah especially with the iron man incentive being gone the racketeer would no definitely be nowhere near as useful to them you know so yeah i guess we'll just we'll see what happens with body yeah. boss rework and if i mean you know every piece of content there's like lessons learned that get applied to other stuff yeah, so sure. who knows yeah, yeah, I think you guys are good at definitely looking back at you know. For sure, Ma man. The fact that they're even attempting to do the wildy bosses in a multi area, I would assume that they're thinking they about the issues. They were always meant to be multi. Perhaps. They <laughs> were. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, they're why, in multi. That's yeah. why they take reduced damage in singles, right? Like they were always meant yeah. to be multi bosses. It's just yeah, they weren't really designed well to be multi bosses. And I think now yeah. we have like a better sense of how that looks. Yeah, yeah. Much better. Right. Well, mod goblin. Ben, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much Thanks, for man. coming on, mate. Uh, is there any social media, Twitter, or anything like that you would like to give a shout out to? Um, you can. I don't really tweet very often, to be fair. You can find me on Twitter at like at Jack X Goblin. Um, but um, personals. I don't really. I don't really tweet a whole lot. I um. Personals? Nah, that's calm. I'm not that. I'm not. I'm. Oh, not okay, you're not. It was okay. just cool to talk about the game. I don't really care. Like. Okay. Well, we'll link your Twitter yeah. down below, mate. It's been it's been a pleasure talking to you. We went way over the uh, yeah. The we estimated time. Is going to be Sorry, absolutely man, fuming. I can't lie, but uh, it's oh fun. man. <laughs> well, apologize for us. I'm sorry that we kept you for so long, but it was great talking I will to you. Pass man. on your apology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for. Thanks out. so much, boys. It's been a pleasure.